Randy Johnson. So I, saw, I was at the Kingdom the night uh, Mac hit the ball through the roof off of uh, Randy, and I think Randy punched out 20 that day, and Mac hit 500-foot home runs. I still can see that ball going through the roof. So uh, that's about as iconic as I can go. But since it's my bench coach, I can brag on him for a while. All right, that was Andy Green before the game. Today we're in a little bit of a rain delay here at PNC Park. They are getting the field ready to go for baseball. Shouldn't be too long before Garrett Cole is throwing a pitch to Manuel Margot, and that's what we're all waiting on right now. Second game of this three-game series with Mark Grant. I'm Jesse Agler, and uh, you hear Andy there asked about the, the farm system and the prospects and everybody who's not only on the way, but also some guys that are here. And I, I think that's an important thing when you discuss the young talent that the Padres have. And mm -hmm. you're right, it, it's something you take the glasses off for. Uh, there are talented and exciting young guys mm -hmm. here at this level right now. It's part of the, I want to say, luxury that the Padres have with the abundance of young talent learning at the big league level. And he makes a good point. These guys are getting a chance to see what the best of the best is. Yeah. These young hitters, they're seeing the best five starters in each organization at the highest level you can play. Now, whether they go back to double-A next year, triple-A, hey, that's going to be all sorted out in the offseason and during the uh, spring training next year. But I'll tell you what, with the way the Padres are going, right, you compare what happened last year at this point and up to this point, Andy Green and his coaching staff, I think they've got these guys going in the right direction, development at the big league level, and then just take it from there. You hey, just, learning on the job. You just saw the uh, the Rule 5 catcher there, Luis Torrens, walking with Denelson Lamette, one of three Rule 5 players that the Padres have carried this year. And, and you heard Andy asked about that a few moments ago. The Padres, without question, this season, and going back to last year with Perdomo as well, take a, a different approach, I think, than most major league teams do with the Rule 5 draft. As Andy said, a lot of times, you know, teams are looking at a triple-A guy who may have fallen off a 40-man roster, having that opportunity to bring him in because he's close right. to the big league level. The Padres are saying, we don't really care what level he played at last year. We think he's got a high ceiling. We're rebuilding, and, and we'll see what he can do. And, and talk about the great experience mm. that these guys get. As you said, facing the top pitchers or the top hitters, whatever it is, uh, for a guy like Miguel Diaz, who we do expect to see before this season is over again. For a guy like Terenz, and, and last year for Luis Perdomo and, and Al Cordoba as well, this season what I think about and I have to remind myself Jesse every day when I see these rule five guys first and foremost you look at teams in the past that have had three rule five guys I, it, the, the seasons have been treacherous I mean disastrous yeah. it's not been a disaster this year for San Diego sure they're what 12 14 games under 500 but the thing is you got to realize that the rule five guys that are on the Padres right now they were in a ball or rookie ball last year I mean that is a tremendous jump and to see what they're doing at this level and sure there's probably more peaks and valleys sure. and there's been a lot of times when there's been very successful but that's going to help players like Luis Torrens and the other rule five players on this team it can only get better for them it's a really fascinating thing and, and not to get too far out of my lane here but I predict in the next few years you're going to see a few more teams use the rule five draft the way the Padres have yeah. the last couple of years I, I think they're kind of starting to set a little bit of a trend here it, it just makes sense if you're going to do a tear down and a build the way that we've seen the Astros and the Cubs and the Padres doing it, it would almost be silly not to use the rule five draft in this way not to say that every year there's going to be players available to you that you think uh, can do this but it, it is different than what anybody else has ever done and, and I find it to be a, a little fascinating part of the, the baseball roster construction. I think when you look at expectation of this team, what it was in the spring training and what they've done now, I mean, sure, you know, there's not going to be any playoffs this year. That's, that's granted. But what we're seeing is the future developing here at the big league level. And, hey, is it going to be next year? Is it going to be two, three years from now? Regardless what it is, two, three, four, whatever, we're seeing some players that have a chance to pay some dividends for a long, long time at the big league level. All right, so you've got the Rule 5 guys. You've got the super young guys. And again, I, I think it's important. Don't forget about a Hunter Renfro yeah. and a Carlos Asuaje and a Manuel Margo, guys that were uh, leading the Pacific Coast League uh, all over the place last season as the El Paso Chihuahuas, the Padres' AAA team, won the Pacific Coast League in 2016. They get up to the major league level this year. Renfro won National League Player of the Week at the end of September last year. Manuel Margo is the reigning National League Player of the Week. And Carlos Asuaje right there has really turned into a very reliable and steady contributor on the right side of the infield. It isn't only guys in the minor leagues to get excited about. When you look at the success of the minor leaguers and what they've done, I know there are going to be people out there to say, oh, but you know what? It was double A. Hey, it was triple A. But you know what, though? Wouldn't you rather have it winning in the minor leagues and coming up here rather than just stinking it up in the minor leagues and say, okay, you know what? We need to fill this role. Uh, let's call Joe Schmo up, even though he doesn't have the talent like these guys have. My point is, 
have them win in the minor leagues, come up here. Yeah, they're going to take their lumps. And you mentioned it. The Astros did it. The Cubs did it. There are a number of teams throughout the course of history that have done it. It's just a patient type wait and see situation. A little bit of a leadership challenge, certainly, I'm sure, at times for the manager, Andy Green. It's a it's a different situation than most have, but uh, he obviously ha has shown himself to fully understand and I think embrace the situation as well. Andy Green knows exactly what's going on, okay? He realizes the hand he's dealt and to work with. And here's what I admire about Andy. And you know it as well as anybody, Jesse. When the beard. He, what's that? The beard? The beard. Oh, yeah. the beard. is it's like, He's an icon. <laughs> um, the, he comes to the clubhouse each and every day to work telling these guys hey we might might not match up against the Dodgers on paper or the Mets or whoever it is the Nationals but you know what we got to come with the idea to the ballpark each and every day that we're going to put ourselves in a position to win sure we have to play a perfect game we've got to play defense we've got to hit timely we've got a good pitching but when you have that attitude each and every day at least you're you know you're you're going in with the right attitude we are waiting out a brief rain delay here at the start of this game at Pittsburgh and uh, Jan Hervis Solarte, unsurprisingly, entertaining the troops down in the dugout. But we were just about ready to go right before the schedule, the 7.05 time for first pitch here, and there was just a massive downpour. Uh, it didn't last more than a few minutes long, but it did uh, put some water onto the infield, and so the Pittsburgh ground crew is working on that. And I mean, this was as they came out to exchange the lineup cards. I mean, it began at this moment, and uh, you see the umpires. Dan Isani on the right there. He's the crew chief. Yeah. He was waving Mark McGuire out. Mark's got the, the lineup card tonight. He's like, we're doing this. Let's go. Yeah, that's and, and it's just getting heavier and heavier and heavier. That is not a camera through a waterfall, folks. <laughs> I mean, that's that's coming from the skies. So <laughs> they were they were trying. I, and, and I think if the rain maybe would have lasted a, a few fewer moments. Right. Then uh, we would have been able to start on time, but uh, it did some damage on the infield, and now uh, these guys are out there uh, working as hard as anybody to get the field ready to go. And uh, as you said, they're feeding the chickens out there, but it's it's beautiful now. I mean, you got a couple of uh, gray clouds in the vicinity, but overall, uh, a very nice evening on, on what was a very beautiful day here in Pittsburgh yesterday. It was hot. We obviously had the two-hour rain delay before the start of last night's game. Here today, temperatures were much cooler, much more comfortable, and uh, a beautiful day. But in this part of the country, you never know what you're going to get weather-wise. It can change pretty quickly, and that's exactly what happened. Checking in on uh, some other things from around baseball. You've got some big-time performers as of late. Mark Grant, uh, I'll put you on that list because you're always hot. But Jose <laughs> Altuve, he's been hot all season. Last 11 games hitting over 460. I mean, he is just having an incredible year for those Astros. Paul Goldschmidt, uh, I saw one article today talking about him in the MVP conversation yep. for the Diamondbacks. Eduardo Nunez traded from the Giants to the Red Sox last month. He's had a nice week in Boston. And uh, Nolan Arenado, another guy that seems to be consistently uh, part of the, the good things that are happening over in Colorado with the Rockies. It's National League West. It is not a joke. Uh, we were just talking about it and where the Padres sort of fit in, both now and in the future. Uh, but the, the Diamondbacks and the Rockies, does one of those teams maybe this year surprise you more than the other and the success that they've had? You know, had? I picked the Rockies to be the wild card. Oh. Uh, Mark Sweeney said it a while ago, maybe a couple months ago, he said there was going to be three teams from the West in the playoffs. And it looks like Mark's really on the money right there. But when you look at those players right there, there wasn't one pitcher in there, right? These well, are guys no, that can was... help you each and every day in the lineup to try to capture the flag at the end of the season. Yeah, as you mentioned, the National League wild card right now, those two teams, Arizona and Colorado, I love this cliche this time of year. If the season ended today, mm, what would happen? They would be the playoff teams uh, in the wild card. They would go head to head in a uh, one game playoff to advance to the National League Division Series. All right, the Pirates have taken the field. We told you it wouldn't be too long. And uh, the weather report is brought to you by your always sunny San Diego Honda dealers. Like we said, it, it's a beautiful night, 71 degrees here in western Pennsylvania. The rain has left, and we're going to play some baseball and uh, hopefully uninterrupted baseball for the next couple of hours with Mark Grant, Bob Scanlon, our entire hardworking Fox Sports San Diego crew. I'm Jesse Agler. you got to be careful in that dugout, though. It's slippery when wet. Cuidado, piece of mojado. So in game two of this series, the Padres lineup is brought to you by Toyota. Manuel Margo, of course, will lead off. Aswahe batting second. Corey Spangenberg in the outfield tonight as Jose Perella gets a, a night off. Jan Hervis Solarte slides over to the uh, more familiar, at least from the past, third base. Will Myers batting fifth again. Hector Sanchez catching Denelson Lament for the second consecutive start. 
last weekend against the Pirates. Lament had great success, so why switch those things up? And you get a look at Garrett Cole. He's 9 and 7 with a 3.970 ERA, and we saw him look very good on Sunday at Petco. Very aggressive in the zone, no doubt about that, and he's got ace stuff. He should be one of those guys, along with Ivan Nova, to a nice one two punch. Four seamer, two seamer. And remember what he did last time, Jesse? He was like low 90s with the fastball, and then he reached back when he needed, touched 97, 98 on the fastball. Yeah, he's got a little bit extra there when he needs it. Uh, defensively for the Pirates in back of Garrett Cole. A couple of changes from last night. Uh, you take a look there at uh, Adam Frazier. He's at second base today, and uh, he's played all over the diamond for them. Francisco Cervelli, a second consecutive start behind the plate. You see with Frazier at second, Josh Harrison slides over to third base, and uh, he's a guy that can play in a bunch of uh, different places for them defensively. Keys to the game are brought to you by your San Diego Honda dealers, and so with Garrett Cole on the mound, what would you like to see tonight, Mark Grant? Well, Jesse's keys looks like this, and Cole's good run. He's put together uh, a nice run with each of the like seven or eight starts he's had his last nine decisions he's seven and two nice in the month of July he was three and oh with a two point two five earned run average and the bullpen to bounce back please hey last night was a blip on the radar hey a fluke if you will with sure. the way that this bullpen has been throwing consistently so uh, turn it around for the guys in the pen all right it is now 730 here we were supposed to play at 705 my advanced mathematical skills tell me uh, that's a 25 minute rain delay here at the start not too bad particularly when you consider we waited over two hours to start last night's game Garrett Cole is set Manuel Margot is set and away we go on a Saturday evening in Pittsburgh Pennsylvania and strike one to Manuel so you said it Cole will live you know low mid 90s but he can hump it up there every once in a while when he needs to and uh, almost an Andrew Kashner like repertoire if you think about it. I like it and I think I made that reference last time he was on the hill. This is Bell. Margo pops out and one away. Yeah, you look at his delivery, you look at his stuff. Andrew Kasher's got the four seam of the two seam, the slider of the changeup. I think Garrett Cole falls into that category. A couple of good hard throwing young right handers. Here's a Swahe. And listening to Andy before the game, it, it did sound like the plan against Garrett Cole is is to attack early if, if you get your pitch early in the count go for it yep. they're not going out there tonight to try and uh, work the count all evening and run the pitch count up they've got something in mind and if they get it they're going to go for it and you know I think a lot of times as fans we maybe think about a team having a an approach with that sort of thing that they just sort of always use yep. For the Padres it's very game to game starter to starter another pop up though this time shallow center field McCutcheon waits on it eventually it comes down he makes the catch and two pop outs for Garrett Cole here in the top half of inning number one. So it's why he homered last night one of the three that the Padres had is retired and the bases are empty for the number three hitter left fielder Corey Spangenberg just his 13th start of the season out in left field. You're going to see that a little bit tonight. Yeah you got the egg crate back there to uh Get all the muck off the bottom of your cleats. Wet grass, you walk on the dirt, and uh, you won't get your spikes getting into the dirt. You lose traction. For the good footing on the hill. Yeah. You ever use the tongue depressor out there, the popsicle stick? Yeah, but you use your opposite hand so you don't slip and cut your throwing hand. That's a good tip. Yeah. Bounces the breaking ball. One and one to Spangenberg. Corey, couple of hits. Both singles last night, also the bases loaded walk. I learned that one in high school, actually. Makes sense. As a pitcher, you want to protect your, right. your throwing hand and arm as much as you can. You see guys with their right hand, if they're a right hand pitcher, and they're like digging at their cleats and stuff, you know, you slip and you catch a spike and slice, you know, next thing you know, it's, you, know, you need a pint of blood. You're out of the game. That's pretty extreme. Well, yeah, I guess you hit an artery. Happen. Sure. Really imagine the worst case scenario here. Some coach put a scare into you when you were 16. Spangenberg fouls that one down the left field line. Two balls and two strikes. Padres are swinging early, Jesse. Just like Andy Green said in his pregame presser, try to attack Garrett Cole. Spangenberg's got some friends and family in. A five hour drive from where he's from in Pennsylvania. And now a full count, three balls and two strikes. Of 
Cole an all star in 2015 when 19 and 8 that year with a 2.60 ERA. Number one overall pick by the Pirates back in 2011. Out of the University of California, Los Angeles. He a Bruin. And Spangenberg with the bases loaded walk last night draws a two out walk here in the first. And so Garrett Cole, who walked only two in seven innings at Petco last Sunday, walks somebody here in the first inning tonight. Yeah, very few walks this year. That's his 34th walk in 130. I'll do my math. It's, it, it's like 134 plus innings. The points really throw me. Effective curveball, only 130 points batting average weakness, doesn't throw changeups for strikes, and the rest of his toolbox there. Curveball, slider, changeup. A little bit of everything. Right. A mixed bag. Here's Salarte, switch hitter from the left side, and the fastball is away. So, what got you on the math? The points you said? Uh, well, starting this game, 133 and two thirds. So then I got it. So, so then you two added two here, thirds of an inning. Right. So that would be 134 and a third, right? Yeah. Sorry about that. Sharp as a bowling ball. <laughs> Round like one too. <laughs> Solarte pops it up, but Fallon out of play. Each of the two outs here in the top of the first inning have been pop-ups off the uh, bats of Manuel Margo and Carlos Suárez. Now Harris started at shortstop last night, had the sixth inning home run, finished two for five, and now just his third start of this season at third base. Kind of odd to say that and think that when we saw him there so frequently in 2015 and 2016. Lays off the breaking ball. Lance Barksdale agrees, and now two and one. And Nelson Lamette is in the bullpen. Maybe that's where he took cover during the rain delay. Yeah. Things go really well for him tonight. That's going to become like a thing, right? You believe it. He's <laughs> <laughs> always going to sit there until it's time to take the field. And you know, situations like that, pitchers, I, I can only speak for myself, but I wanted to get out there. Yeah. I want the game to start on time. You've got your routine. I really dislike sitting around waiting. Well, that, that word routine is the key thing yeah. there, right? I mean, everybody sort of has what they go through mm -hmm. in the bullpen. You walk in, you sit in the dugout, you take your drink of water, whatever it might be. And you're right, that is disruptive. This is a ground ball. It's going to get through the right side for a base hit. Spangenberg on the muddy track going to go first to third. And the Padres with runners on the corners, two outs here in the first inning. But you know what? I think about Lament and I think about his major league debut. It was in New York against the Mets. And it was supposed to rain that night. And the Mets bumped Jacob DeGrom off that start because they didn't want to have to stop and start with DeGrom on the mound. And Lament making his big league debut in New York, you know, against a, a pretty good team. And the whole rain situation, it didn't bother him at all. He was outstanding. And that's the way he looks on the mound, too. Nothing phases him. And he has proven in the short time that he's been here that, you know, if he makes a mistake, he could bounce back with a quick out here, a quick out there to get out of an inning. That does not look like a guy concerned about his routine no. being broken. Very confident. And Stamina are having a sip of water together. Taken in a ball game. Seeing if Will Myers can give the Padres a lead here in the first inning. And a fastball strike, nothing and one to Will. 0 for 3 in last night's game, but he did draw a couple of walks. He is the team leader in walks drawn. Free passes received. Whichever. Runners on the corners, two outs, and that one hit him. I imagine the Pirates are going to want to take a closer look, as we will. Looks like it hit his right forearm, right? Underneath. There. Yep. Matt Caesar left last night's game after being hit on the wrist or the arm. Andy Green said he's available maybe to pinch run, play defense. Not sure about hitting. See how he feels as the night goes. Left forearm, I stand corrected. Yeah, that one's going to be uncomfortable. Yeah. So base is loaded two outs for Hector Sanchez. Pinch hit in last night's game and up in a big spot here early on against Garrett Cole. Breaking ball is outside one and oh. Pirates by the way have a reputation for pitching inside more than any other team and it's more than just a reputation. They do. Unlike most every other team in baseball here in 2017 they work into everybody and because of that they do hit guys. It's just sort of 
part of the cost of doing business for Ray Searage and this pitching staff. That's been the big hot topic the last couple of years. Yeah. So my flip side to that is, hey, other teams got to pitch inside too. And if guess what, if if the what the opposition hits the Pirates, they can't balk at that. No pun intended. They can't gripe at that because their guys are doing it. Man, last weekend, I mean, a handful of guys yes. were hit by pitches in the series between these two teams. And there's Ray Searage, the former left-hander. Well, he's still a left-hander. Um, but it, it's not meaning you're hitting guys with intent. You're just throwing in off the plate, and guys are diving, and they're getting it on the elbow, they're getting it on the shoulder, or the knee, or whatever. Josh Harrison gets hit about as much as anybody in baseball the last couple of years. No hit batter there. That's a 97 mile per hour heater down the middle. Padres leave them loaded in the first. Time facing Pittsburgh going seven strong innings. Seventh strikeout for Lamette, out number two of the sixth inning. That'll work. Thank you very much. Nice job by Lamette. That'll end the seventh for the first time. Denelson Lamette is through seven innings. They're shutout innings. 25 year old right hander out there going to make his 12th big league start. His first at PNC Park. Scoreless game as we go to the bottom of the first inning. And the Pirates lineup is brought to you by Hyundai. Starling Marte leads it off. Frazier and McCutcheon to follow here in the first. And the rest of it, Bell, Harrison, Polanco, Cervelli, Mercer, and pitcher Garrett Cole. So the Pirates coming at uh, Denelson Lamette with pretty much the same look with uh, just a couple of minor changes from yesterday in the scouting report on the young right-hander mark. Yeah, the Dominican-born righty is making his 12th start. He's got the plus three pitch mix, the fastball. The slider and the changeup, and as Bob Scanlon said before the game, talking with Andy Green, get to two strikes quickly because he could put some hitters away. Padres defense brought to you by Lincoln. See Spangenberg in left field. Has never committed an error out there. Marte faced Lamette three times last Saturday night at Petco, and all three times he struck out. And Nelson gets right ahead of him with a 94 mile per hour fastball. Nothing in one. That's a tough night in the big leagues. Three punchies. It happens, particularly against a strikeout pitcher. And I think early on here in his career, it's fair to say, based on the numbers and everything else we've seen, including that slider, this guy is a strikeout pitcher. And what do you know? Quickly ahead, 0 oh and 2. So now it's time to wipe him out. Does he do it with the fastball or the slider to Marte? You tell me, Mr. Pitcher. I say slider off the plate. Make him go fish and throw some chum out there. It is the slider. He lays off of it, and that'll be part of the adjustment, I imagine, that the Pirates make today. They saw it last weekend, and uh, they kind of know the MO a little bit. And so, is it up to him to adjust, or do you just say, hey, I think it's good enough to get you? I think it's good enough to get you. Yeah. The slider will always get you. How about fastball way up, Hector Sanchez says. These two work together. And the Mets start last week, and the fastball is up at 95. See, here's what you want to do. You want to try to put him away quickly. Maybe one pitch to have the hitter chase. 
you don't want to go 3 2 after going 0 2. They go back to the fastball on 2 2, and it hit him. And I think it got Sanchez on the redirect. Well, that's a shame. That hurts because quickly head 0 2 and misses big time with the fastball. Big time because he wants it down and away. And this one leaks up and in. It gets Marte on the left tricep. And then, as you mentioned, Jesse, it gets Hector Sanchez. And now it's time out of the stretch. So, right out of the chute, Marte at first base, certainly a stolen base threat. Adam Frazier getting the start at second base tonight and he bats second swings at the first pitch could be two. It is four six three Aswahe and Coleman get it to Myers and uh, hey hit batter no problem for Denelson Lament that didn't take long at all and Hunter Renfro's college teammate Adam Frazier grounds into a twin killing here in the bottom of the first. I think that's a good game plan every inning hit the first guy <laughs> everybody else is scared and then you get your ground ball let the infielders work for you. Four six three. Who doesn't love a twin killing? You hit somebody in your major league debut, didn't you? I did. Uh, Ron Oster. <laughs> How did the Reds react to that? Uh, and then Joe Price hit me. And then the bench is clear. No punches were thrown though. Here's McCutcheon. Because I'm a lover, not a fighter. Okay, guys, come on. We're trying to play a big league ball game. Come on, let's all calm down. Major league debut. So much for a nice smooth yeah, no welcome kidding. to the major leagues. McCutcheon was held in check last night when you consider the overall offensive night. He was one for five with a single and a run scored. But he has hit in five straight. He had four home runs last weekend. Swings through that fastball, 95 from Lamette. And Denelson ahead of McCutcheon, one and two. He's got a crew. And they got pretty good seats out there. You know what was great at Old Three Rivers? They had sections in the outfield. Everybody brought a sign. Remember how many signs there were out there? It's like Leland's Bucks play hardball. They even had one for the organist, Vince Lashai. Uh, the Cobra. They had the big Cobra thing for Dave sure, Parker. Yeah. That was one of the things I really looked forward to going to Three Rivers back in the day. Looks like they've all autographed the sign as well. A little bit outside with that fastball. Outside of that, this would be the superior facility, no? No question about it. Ain't no stopping us now. Hey, they come into play today, four and a half games in back of the Cubs in the Central. Although the Cubs did beat the Nationals this afternoon at Wrigley, so it's now five. And McCutcheon swings and misses at a good slider. So after the leadoff batter gets hit by a pitch, Denelson Lament comes back, gets Frazier to ground it into the double play, and strikes out McCutcheon. No score after one.
Standing here at PNC Park in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Time now for the San Diego fans of the game. A couple of the Friar faithful among the. Uh, what do we call them? The pirate fans? Yeah. I, something with pirates. The, the Jolly Roger lovers, you know. The you know Bucko uh, faithful. Yeah, a lot of gold. But you call it yellow or gold? They get very upset if you call it yellow. Okay, I'll in, say. In the whole city. In respect to the uh, pirates, uh, black and gold. A lot of that going on here. But every time we see some Friar faithful, hey, they're intermingling with the people, having a, a talk about the game. Hey, where are you from? There's a Villanova fan. Is that Mr. Caesar? I bet you that's, I think that's Mr. Caesar. I've met it before. Hunter Renfro leads off against Garrett Cole, then Dusty Coleman, and Denelson Lamet, bottom third of the Padre batting order here. After the Padres had the bases loaded, two outs in the top of the first inning, but Hector Sanchez struck out. That was that. And now back to work against Cole. Renfro, 20 home runs here in his first full season in the big leagues. 11 games at the major league level last September. All he did was hit 371 with four homers, three doubles, drove in 14, and hit 409 in the final week of the season to be the last National League Player of the Week of 2016. 20 homers, 20 doubles, pretty much everything you could expect and uh, hope for here in his first full Major League season, and of course the great arm out in right field as well. Strokes that one out towards left center. What a routine play. And Starling Marte makes the catch and so up comes Dusty Coleman the only Padre to break through last Sunday afternoon against Garrett Cole that was his second major league home run not a cheapy either against a guy who had been throwing a shutout up to this point. No he went down and got a fastball and every ball I think that Dusty Coleman has struck he's hit it really well. I remember his first big league knocked a double to the gap ball that was smoked that home run was. He, both of his home runs were hit really well. Ninth major league game, sixth start this year. And a ground ball the other way for a base hit. And like you said, another hard hit ball from Dusty Coleman. Second hit of the night for the Padres against Garrett Cole. Solarte with a single in the first inning. Now Coleman here in the second. Once again, swinging early off of Garrett Cole. He wants it down and away. It leaks in. He fights it off at 95. Big hole on that right side. In between Bell and Frazier. And another hit for Dusty Coleman. Shocker. He's all over Garrett Cole. Now Lament trying to pick up a sacrifice. Pulls it back to take a strike. Here in his Major League debut season, he does not have a hit, but he does have. One sacrifice. What was your approach as a pitcher when you had a guy up there bunting? I mean, did you just want to lay it up there and let him do it, or were you trying to get some bad contact, or what? Depending on the pitcher, okay. because if they could swing the bat, you know they could always pull the butcher boy. But. Generally speaking, if I knew it was a 100% sacrifice, I, I want to throw it right down the middle. I'd hop off the mound, try to cover the third base, whatever, first, first, and second, whatever the situation was. My responsibility was to get it done, get it done early, and then cover as quickly as I can if that ball is bunted, either which way, third base or first base. So now two strikes on Lament. There's your butcher boy. And he lines one foul. Not a bad idea. But Gregory Polanco in right field is playing so shallow. <laughs> How shallow is he? As Austin Hedges is putting on the mask, protecting himself in the pottery dugout because the late shillelagh from Lamet. Bunting again, and it'll be a foul ball and a strikeout. So Lamont and Lament unable to get the sacrifice down. Two outs, Coleman at first, Manuel Marco coming up. And it's time now for the Tools of the Trade, brought to you by Ram Trucks. Remember, we talked about Manuel Marco in our pregame show about the pop. Well, look at the location of this pitch. This is a changeup. Pitch up in the zone. He stays on it enough to send it on its way down the left field line. Another pitch up. Off Joaquin Benoit last night. Oh, yeah. 
kid's got some pop. He's the whole field. He is fun to watch. Four for eight in the last two games against the Pirates, including that home run against Ivan Nova. Two hits last night, including that home run against Benoit. He's been really fun to watch at the top of the Padre batting order. Foul down to the first baseman, Bell, his first time. He's 0 for 1. Coleman goes, pitches outside. Cervelli's throw from his knees. Not in time. Boy, it is a muddy track out there, and Dusty Coleman looked like Scooby Doo trying to take off from first base. The, the legs were going, and he wasn't getting anywhere, but manages to beat the throw from Cervelli. Go, go, go! <laughs> hey, you know what? A really good throw from Cervelli from his knees. I mean, that is a P rod. The flash look and diving towards the outside part of the bag. Stay on the bag. Whoa, that was close. Clint Hurdle will not challenge it, so Dusty Coleman collects his first major league stolen base. I don't know that he'll go and retrieve the bag after the game the way Jose Reyes did <laughs> at Petco a few weeks ago when he stole his 500th, but a nice accomplishment nonetheless, and he's in scoring position for Margot. That's and that one misses. So it's great. Guys first, right? It's fun. It really is. Maybe wow. he will take it home. I don't know. Probably not. That's definitely one of the most fun parts about having a young team. On 3 and 0. Into right field, and Polanco is there to make the catch. So, Padres leave a man in scoring position. No score after one and a half. I mean, the fastball plays, uh, it can punch guys out, and the slider is as good as anybody's in the game. So uh, you're looking at two ways to punch guys out, and uh, to him, it's, it is about getting ahead. It's about throwing strikes, and if he gets ahead early and he's able to put guys away, he'll be very successful. Andy Green talking about his right-hander to Nelson Lamette. Here is the slider that he's talking about. Strike three to Andrew McCutcheon. It starts off in the strike zone. You can see the depth on that pitch. And that is one of the reasons I think that this strikeout ratio is going to continue throughout his career. At the level that it is now, 11.7 strikeouts per nine. Maybe not, but he's not a guy that only relies on guys chasing his pitches out of the zones, guys. He can throw his fastball for strike by guys, and he's got that nasty slider that he can throw for strike that he showed behind in the count as well. Good things ahead for Denelson Lamette. Guys, back to you. Thank you, Bob. And guys, I'll ask both of you as he goes to work on, on Josh Bell here. I mean, it, it seems to me as, as sort of uh, just a, a guy that doesn't know about pitching the way you guys know about pitching but he'll, he'll throw the slider to get guys to chase it he can throw it for a strike and that can't be the easiest thing to do for a young guy at this point in his career. No and, and what I say to that is you know let's say it's 0 2 it's easy for a guy to bounce a slider well at this level you'll get hitters that just spit on that 
what Denelson needs to do, and he's he's shown it tonight already. Throw that slider that's enticing enough to the hitter to where it ends up two baseballs or so off the end of the plate. To where guys have to offer at it. Because it's close, it looks like a strike. Hey, the ones that he's going to bounce out for no, that, that, these guys are going to just spin on that, and it's a wasted pitch. Bob Scanlon, what do you think about that? I agree with you 100 percent, Mud. And my question is, how much do you think he is still learning on a nightly basis mm. just how much that slider is going to break? Because there are times I think where it even breaks more than he anticipates. I think he's still learning the pitch, and as he learns it, he will start to learn how to command it differently. For a strike like you're talking about and then that big sweeper out of the zone when he wants to and I think we've already seen signs that he's starting to get that feel. Yeah and Bob uh, you, you could comment on this as well but you know we've heard stories of guys that throw just a slider right but they'll wrap it a little more and they'll create a bigger break maybe throw it earlier in the count to get ahead and then that nasty slider where it's not as big as a wrap and it's a tighter more depth of a slider for the punch out. No question about it. And I think one of the great assets that he has with him right now is Jolie's Chassin, who does exactly that, just what you were talking about. And so to be able to sit there for four days next to Jolie's and talk to him about those types of things, I don't think there's any better veteran that he can learn from because, Mud, as both you and I have experienced in our own careers, yes, we learn from our coaches, but oftentimes we learn just as much from our teammates. Yep. Well, he has been a lot of fun to watch since he made his big league debut at City Field earlier this year. Gets Bell. Now he goes to work on Harrison. There's Chassin. After the trade deadline, I think some people thought he would be wearing a different uniform. AJ Preller asked about it, and he said, "You never know what the offseason will look like." But he's certainly a guy we'd even like to have conversations with in terms of coming back next year because he'll be a free agent, and you got to figure that that relationship that he's developing with Lamette and that sort of mentorship would be at least a small part of that, if not more. And to have the time he's spent with Chassin, can you imagine knowing that he's going to have him in the future as well? What that does for a kid? Harrison grounds that up the middle. Dusty Coleman makes the play, and two more quick outs for Lamette here in the second. And here comes Gregory Polanco. Quite a moment for him off the bench last night. Padres were leading. A couple of men on base, and then the Pirates were leading. He went splash into the Allegheny River, his first career pinch hit home run. It was a big one, 434 feet up over everything in right field. He set off the fireworks. He put the Pirates in front, 7 to 6, and they would go on to the 10 6 victory in the first game of this series. Forty three home runs now have gone into the Allegheny River here by twenty nine different players. Ballpark opened in two thousand and one. Good power power matchup here. You know a lot was said I think as we watched that at bat from Polanco last night. Remember the first pitch of the at bat fastball in that he fouled into the glove. And it was almost like he was hunting. The fastball in. Pitch here, pitch there, pitch here. Bang! Just waiting on it. Fastball in, and he turned on. So let's see if Lamette counters. And it doesn't mean you can't pitch inside, you got to get it inside more, but see if he goes maybe soft away, breaking balls away, back door. That's a fastball away, he reaches for it, pops it up. Solarte and Coleman. Oh, it'll be Solarte. Second put out of the inning and a one two three second for the Nelson Lament.
Dead by a throw. Here's a swing and a hit by Walker. Nineteen sixty World Series, one of just two ever home runs to end a World Series in a wild seven game set between the Pirates and the New York Yankees. I think the other thing people remember about that World Series, uh, aside from just the Mazeroski home run, is that when the Yankees won, they won big. And then the Pirates won. It was all these squeakers, including, yep. of course, the walk off blast in game seven. I mean, that does not happen very often. Forget World Series games. There haven't been that many postseason games to end with a home run but it did in 1960 and they raised it all the way up here in Pittsburgh that year as he had a walk off home run in game seven of the World Series that is literally when you're a kid in your backyard all you pretend to do and there he did it. One thing that sticks out on that clip we saw the left fielder for the Yankees Yogi Berra. Yeah. Good stuff. Forbes Field. Another pop-up. We've seen more than our fair share of those tonight from both sides. And Harrison coming most of the way down towards home plate makes that catch. So Carlos Sosuahe now 0 for 2 as he led off here against Garrett Cole in a scoreless game in the top of the third inning. We'll have uh, some more of those uh, iconic and memorable home runs throughout the night. We're going we're gonna to talk about the, the dingers this evening because Chicks dig the long ball. Nothing like a big time home run in crunch time in a big league ball game, I'll tell you that. Here's Corey Spangenberg. He goes after the first pitch from Cole. And now behind, nothing and one after that foul ball. But here in Pittsburgh, that moment, still among the biggest in their uh, tremendous sports history. Spangenberg walked his first time up. Padres had a little bit of a two out rally going in the first. It started with Corey's free pass. Solarte then singled. Myers was hit by a pitch, and all of a sudden, after there had been two outs and nobody on, there were two outs and the bases were loaded. Padres could not cash in. And now Spangenberg behind, one and two. You know, we talk about that 1960 team, and then you fast forward to the early 90s. Pirates had some darn good teams, just couldn't get past the Braves. And there were many times that a lot of people thought that that pirate team with Jim Leland was going to, after the 92 season, yeah. I mean, for years to come, not the case. Didn't happen. It was a long time before they made it back to the playoffs. And uh, they had their run the last couple of years. And the question I think right now is where are they in their window? Yeah. Breaking 20, ball. 20 year span. No playoffs for the Bucks. Vanderberg drew the walk his first time up. Now the payoff pitch from Cole. It's in the air foul down the line. Be interesting to see how the Pirates uh, play it out here the rest of the way in 2017. I think in the clubhouse they're very much going for it. And some of that of course will depend upon what happens with that team on the north side of Chicago and the Brewers as well. But Spangenberg draws a walk for the second time. And so why are we uh, talking about home runs? Well, here's one reason. It's uh, on this date, 1999, the Padre bench coach against the Padres. Mark McGuire, his 500th career home run, August 5th, 1999, against Andy Ashby at Old Bush Stadium. Big Mac hiding behind Andy Green. I didn't know that was possible, but there he is. Remember that same night Tony Gwynn was in search of his 3000th hit and it would come the next day at the big ugh. <laughs> Montreal we oui, we oui. August 6th 1999 and you know what's great about that game is that the Cardinal faithful Cardinal Nation they were rooting for Tony to get that hit they wanted to see history on both ends for their own guy McGuire which they saw and Tony also to get number 3000 didn't happen and there were Cardinal fans that were disappointed. Oh I don't I don't doubt that at all. You know when you think about 
being able to tell somebody, hey, I was at the game when blank happened. Sure. Imagine being able to say I saw somebody's 500th home run and somebody's 3,000th career hit in the same night. I don't think you have to be a best fan of baseball to appreciate the history there. I remember I was in the clubhouse after that game, or it might have been the next day. No, it could have been the next day because we went to Montreal. After the game, Mark McGuire sent over his batting gloves and autographed them for Andy Ashby and gave to Andy Ashby. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Neat guy to have around the club, Mark McGuire. Yeah. Big, big baseball nut. Loves talking baseball. Nice resource for some of these young guys. Little roller back to the mound. Cole will have just the one play. So that puts Spangenberg at second base. Now two down in the third inning. And again, an opportunity for Will Myers. See Myers with the black tape on the wrist. That's where he got hit. He was not wearing that his first time up. Pops it up. Out of play though. Bell and Cervelli were giving it a look. And here he was earlier. A little bit uncomfortable. To take a uh, Garrett Cole pitch off the arm. Boy, you know the technology these days. We just saw Bill Maserat. Was that in high def, by the way? Uh, it was Bill not Ma actually standard definition. Oh, okay. In the 1960 World Series. That, it was in color though. <laughs> Technicolor, I think. I mean, what we have now, it's it's just amazing. Yeah, a little bit uh, different technology than 1960. We can see the ball hit Will Myers and the the muscle ripple. Yeah. As the seams of the baseball leave their mark and roll away, and you get a beautiful picture of a skyline. Fabulous. Crystal clear, high definition. The downside, of course, is they see us in HD. That's true. <laughs> That's a good point. 50 pitches now for Cole, working here at the top of the third. Last night looked like we had a pitcher's duel on our hands. The game was scoreless through four, and it ended up as a 10-6 Pirate victory. See how this one unfolds as Myers hits it hard but foul. And now two and two. You know the grounds crew in between innings we're doing some landscaping for Gary Cole. As he goes to the egg crate again to get the mud out of the spikes his landing area right here where <laughs> the illustrator is <laughs> not working right there right there yeah <laughs> the dark spot two and two to Myers with Spangenberg on second the pitch is again foul where was it <laughs> I think it was right <laughs> no, it, yeah, no. But the dark spot on the front of the mound, yeah. you can see where his foot is landing. Right. I think you got to right click. You try Control Alt Delete. Uh, touch of the screen is not working. <laughs> yeah. Hold down the power button. Myers lays off. They check it first. Nope. Says Trip Gibson, and now they count full three balls and two strikes. Well, let's see if he went from the side. I thought he went. You're insane. If that ball hits the bat, it's no, a fair it isn't. ball. What does that have to do with it? There's nothing in the rule book that says if it's a it's fair a ball. There's nothing. That's that's, that's the, a foul ball, and he swung that, clearly. That's the problem. What's the problem? What does the rule book actually say? By it the way, it doesn't say anything about it. That would be a. It's problem. an umpire's judgment as an offer. Did he intend to offer? So all that stuff that's about breaking the wrist. None oh, of that that's matters. backyard wiffle ball stuff. Correct. So break your wrist. And attempted so, the offer. 
and attempted the offer means anything. So, so if the guy flinches, so you're the guy doesn't break, so a guy could go like this. But he, oh, he didn't break his wrist. I know. I'm saying the wrist. Oh, thing so that's not a swing. That's a swing, and that is in left field, and a nice sliding effort by Marte, but he can't make the catch. Spangenberg will score. Myers gets to second base, and the Padres, on a full swing, take a one nothing lead here in the third. Good to see Will Myers get a double. Here's the effort by Marte. Hey, very catchable ball. I'm not saying it should have been caught, but that ball there off the bat of Will Myers, very, very catchable. And with two outs on the run, Corey Spangenberg gets the Padres on the board. So a walk and a double here in the third inning as the Padres break through. And now Hector Sanchez, who was up with the bases loaded and two outs in his first at bat, sends one in the air. Another pop-up. Mercer calling for it. And the Pirates shortstop will make the catch to end the inning, but the Padres have a 1 0 lead against Garrett Cole. It's just telling myself, hey, you know, get a good pitch, put a good swing on it, and then a good chance the ball's going to leave the ballpark. So, you know, that's the way I hit basically my whole career, you know. I have all the, a lot of these young hitters ask me, hey, did you ever try to hit a home run? I, I can honestly tell you I've never been on, in that box and tried to hit a home run ever. Uh, I just try to put the bat on the ball. I try to hit, and with something with my swing, a little little lift to it, the ball left the ballpark ever since I was 10 years old. So it's just one of those things that God gave me. Mark McGuire flashing back on the home run that he hit this day back in 1999 against Andy Ashby and the San Diego Padres. And what was interesting is what led into that conversation as I asked him, were you nervous? Were you thinking about it? Were you pressing at all to try to get home run number 500? And you saw his answer right there. No, not at all. He never even tried to hit home runs. The other thing that he mentioned, guys, is he always saw Andy Ashby well. Sorry about that, Ash, but he was looking forward to getting number 500 against you. Guys. Thank you, Bob. It's so fascinating to me when you hear these guys say, I've never tried to hit a home run. And, and most of them say that. They say, mm -hmm. you, you don't go up there looking to hit a home run. You just sort of have your approach. And when it happens, it happens. And not to say circumstantially or situationally it hasn't happened where a guy has tried to hit a home run. But for someone to go deep as many times as he did uh, to say, I never tried to. It's just something that happened is, is pretty remarkable to hear. Cervelli leading it off here in the bottom of the third inning against Lament, and that's a foul ball. Came up and got him in the batter's box. Here are the active home run leaders in all of baseball. Albert Pujols this year joined the 600 home run club. Miguel Cabrera closing in slowly but surely on 500. Adrian Beltre right there with him. Carlos Beltran, Edwin Encarnacion. I would not have guessed was fifth right now. I wouldn't have guessed that either. I would have lost that bet. Players. So he's fifth. Uh, along with his parrot. Because <laughs> I believe the parrot has rounded the bases on, on most all of those 300 whatever home runs. 0 2 from Lamette and Cervelli fouls that one off of Hector Sanchez. My goodness.
Hector has missed time this year with concussions. He has had more than his fair share, honestly, over the course of his career. Was that on the back swing or fall? Oh, is the ball right off the left side? Wow. Andy Green looking back towards the dugout. I would not be surprised if uh, either Austin Hedges or Luis Torrens came out. The head athletic trainer for the Padres, Mark Rogo, working with Hector. Austin Hedges has strapped on the chest protector just in case, it would seem. Looks like he would be the guy as Terenz just walked past. And I'm sure, Jesse, there's a checklist that the trainers know and go by protocol as far as putting guys through, you know, do this, do that. How do you feel? How do you respond? But uh, I tell you what, the pottery catchers this year just got beaten up. So Hector's going to stay in the game. And Cervelli, of course, a catcher himself. It's quite the fraternity. And you can see immediately after he fouled that ball off, he. Turned to Sanchez and just put his hands up on his shoulders, checking on him. On 0 and 2, he lays off that tough slider. Now, ball and two strike to Cervelli, leading off here in the bottom of the third inning. Mercer and Cole, the other scheduled hitters here against Denelson. Solarte waits for the nice friendly hop makes the play and out number one here in the third time now for the quick and loans rocket arms and it focuses on that gentleman and specifically the right arm of Denelson Lamette you look at the rookie leaders in the National League for most strikeouts and uh, Lamette remember who didn't make his big league debut until May late May is up there with uh, those three Rocky rookies and Nick Pavetta we saw in Philadelphia before the All Star break. Oh, he said it. He's got big time strikeout stuff. And it began in that major league debut. What was it, eight against the Mets right after yes. the shoot? And my count, as I look at his ledger as far as games started, every start, with the exception of one, he said more strikeouts than innings pitched. I mean, he's equal, like, you know, six innings, six strikeouts. Right. But he's only had one outing where he's had fewer strikeouts than innings pitched. That's a pretty good formula. Yeah. I would say so. He's also in that game against Milwaukee had more strikeouts in a game than any other Padre pitcher this season. Punched out 12 in six innings. And according to my math, that's two an inning. Uh, that's what that would average out to, yes. Because 12 divided by six is two. Is two, yeah. You guys actively think about strikeouts as pitchers? Kind of have to, right? We just talked about, you know, McGuire. And these home run hitters, they go up there and they say, oh, I'm not up there trying to hit a home run. But at times, you, you're going for the strikeout, right? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, guys know their stuff, and they know if they're a strikeout pitcher. And like the home run being the big thing and being sexy, if you are blessed with a good arm and you've got that nasty stuff, yeah, you want the strikeout. And I think, you know, you can't control if a hitter makes contact early in the count. And if you get an early out, hey, you just saved me three or four maybe pitches that I can use later on. If I need that extra to get a punch out. Battling here with Jordy Mercer.
the Met is set as the Pirate shortstop waits. Check to swing. I remember being a teammate of Randy Johnson's in 1992 in Seattle and seeing him throw a 24 pitch inning strike out the side walk off the mound pumping his fist and just you know uh. and then I see another inning where it's a five pitch inning and he's walking off the mound shaking his head how, how dare they hit me <laughs> I don't understand how they put the ball in play Randy you just threw five pitches in an inning right that's an inning imagine what you've saved for later in the game speaking of strikeouts the high slider up and out of the zone for Jordy Mercer. We saw that last weekend too yep. from Lamette working the slider up for a called strike a couple of times certainly for swings and misses. So two outs bases empty Garrett Cole the pitcher takes a fastball strike only one man has reached so far against Lamette. It was the leadoff hitter Starling Marte he was hit by a pitch. I believe it was the very next pitch Adam Frazier grounded into a double play and so Lamette has faced the minimum so far. And now ahead, no balls and two strikes. He did not allow a hit in his last start against the Pirates on Saturday until David Freeze led off the fifth with a single. Foul ball will bring a smile to anybody's face. Saw that in a fortune cookie once. <laughs> Did you? No. <laughs> That's a good one, though. But you just worded it, you know, in a yeah. way that yeah, it was very prophetic. Yeah. And I think fair and true and accurate. Did you ever catch one as a kid? Nope. How about you? No. Anything close? Uh, yeah. Spring training game. Does that count? It doesn't count. Okay, then no. <laughs> you got better odds. Yes. Smaller stadium, fewer people in attendance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Call making will lament work a little bit here with two outs of the bases empty in the third. A 2 2 right there. Nasty slider freezes the opposing pitcher. Three strikeouts for lament. Nine up, nine down. Park and in keeping with our theme of iconic home runs, here's one for you. Game six of the 1975 World Series. Carlton Fisk gets a hold of one down the line. He wills it to stay fair, hitting the foul pole. That puts game six in the books for the Boston Red Sox, forcing an exciting game seven in that series with the Reds would go on to win. But the reason that is so memorable for me, I'm nine years old. I'm at home by myself watching TV and I'm watching Carlton Fisk 
will that ball to hit that foul pole. I'll never forget that moment, guys. It was one of those moments that made me love the game of baseball. I'll never forget it. And what's interesting about that home run as well, which is relevant to what we do now, is that changed sports broadcasting forever as well. Up to that point, they had never just tracked a player after a big play like that. And the only reason it happened, I'm sure you guys have heard this story, is that camera was in the Green Monster out at Fenway Park. There was a rat next to the cameraman. He was too afraid to move his camera, and that is the only reason that we got that iconic picture of Carlton Fisk <laughs> trying to keep that ball fair. Guys, I'll never forget that one. I'm sure you got some favorites as well. Oh, yeah. That's a great story, too, yeah. about the rat and the monster. You don't want a rat in your green monster. I mean, it's just, <laughs> there's not a lot of room back there. No, and if you think about it, it is a great story because the whole, you know, everything was focused on the ball, followed the ball. Yeah. Then the player reaction came in, and it just opened the floodgates People want to see what a player's reaction is. It humanizes the moment. Yes. And great. that's one of the great reactions to any sports moment ever. Carlton Fisk going up the line, trying to wave it fair. And he moved the arms just enough. It's got to be a really great dramatic moment if you end up losing the series and it's still a great piece of history right Absolutely. because there are a lot of great moments that sort of get lost to history because the team doesn't win the game or doesn't win the series but that's how good that one is it overcomes the fact that the Reds won the World Series uh, the next night remember scan talked about watching it on TV I remember my dad allowing me because it was a school night and I remember my dad allowing me to stay up and watch the game big deal oh it was great yeah Going to school the next day and talking to all my buddies about, hey, did you see that game? Good stuff. Here's the 2 2 to Renfro, and Hunter sends one foul. You know, it's also cool to have big time moments like that. If you're a fan, you know exactly where you were when it happened. You can picture the living room or the sports bar, wherever. Yeah. Hard hit and through for a base hit. So those are a couple of the big time homers in baseball history. I think for the Padres there is one that stands near the very top if not at the top of the list. It was 1984 and the National League Championship Series. Deep right field. Way back. Kind of going back to the wall. It's gone. Home runner will be tomorrow. Talk about reaction. Padres mobbing the guard. Don't mess up his hair. <laughs> <laughs> like Fisk, it forced a deciding game. Unlike Fisk, that team won. Padres would defeat the Cubs, of course, to go on to the World Series and raise the pennant for the first time in franchise history. You know, we always talk about guys driving the ball to the opposite field. That's a perfect classic example of Steve Garvey getting started a little bit early. Get that bad head out the outer half of the plate off of Lee Smith and driving that ball. And a great effort by Henry Cotto, too, and right climbing the wall. He was waist high on the top of the wall. No chance, though. No chance, but what a great effort. That's something you really appreciate. Opposite way, 370 out to the wall there at Jack Murphy. It's as big as it gets. Walk off home run to win a postseason game. When you need to win the game. Padres did, and they did. Another pop up, but Fallon out of play. Dusty Coleman got a hit against Garrett Cole his first time up. Padres have sprinkled four base hits, including an RBI double by Myers last inning. On the other side, Denelson Lamette hit a guy, and that's been the only base runner for the Pirates in the first three innings. Got underway a little bit late because of rain tonight. Nothing like yesterday with the over two hour delay. Breaking ball misses one and two to Coleman. Mentioned earlier Garrett Cole number one overall pick out of UCLA back in 2011. He was drafted out of high school 28th overall. By the Yankees and chose to go to school at UCLA over signing. Talk about betting on yourself. Yeah. Paid off in a big way as Coleman loops this one into left field. That's going to get down. It's a second base hit of the night for Dusty Coleman. On his way to third base. Renfro, he's there standing up. And Dusty with a single, a double, and a stolen base already. And the Padres are very nicely set up here in the top of the fourth.
out in front of that one just a little bit as we take a look it's a breaking ball from Cole 81 mile an hour slider but he stayed on that do you see his head yeah. track that ball wow all the way down to the barrel staying on it and we got action So Coleman who homered against Cole last Sunday at Petco has singled and doubled against him here tonight. He's also stolen a base for the first time in his major league career. And the Padres with nobody out of runners on second and third and hey not a bad time for Demelson Denelson Lamette's first major league hit. What do you say. I, I think it's a perfect time. We got Josh Bell at first base playing well off the line. We got a big hole in between the bag and the first baseman. They are playing in cuts down the range. Just play a little game of pepper right here. Don't try to swing too hard. Not a big swing. Just kind of choke up a little bit. Try to think the opposite way. Lamette 0 for 19 now after the strikeout his first time up. It came on a foul bunt attempt. Lays off. A good pitch there. And one and one. Lifts it in the air. It is shallow. That's not going to get it done as the second baseman Frazier goes back to make the play. So Lamette pops out. That's one away. Now the top of the order for Margot. And tonight's cold hard facts are brought to you by Clean Crisp Coors Light. And well, coming to the plate, runners on second and third, one out, and among rookie leaders since the All Star break, a 3.38 batting average is tops in all of baseball. Carlos Sasuaje and Josh Bell, the Pirates, both on that list as well. And feeling more and more comfortable with each at bat at the big league level. Feeling like he belongs, and that goes a long way. 0 for 2 so far tonight with a pop out and a fly out. But a big time chance for the Padres here to add to their 1 0 lead on Garrett Cole and the Pirates. Above average in these situations so time so far this year. Margo now ahead two balls and no strikes and he's got a lot of room down the left field line you see Marte there is playing nowhere near the foul line. Manuel certainly capable of pulling the ball but this one is right back up the middle Cole freezes Renfro goes to first and a nice defensive play by the Pittsburgh pitcher. You know generally speaking the hard throwing pitchers have a tendency to fall off a little bit. I'll tell you what Garrett Cole had himself in a really good fielding position. Talk about a guy who throws hard to watch him release square has to reach up across on his right side. Check the runner freeze the runner. You've got plenty of time to get that batter runner at first base. So the Padres at second and third nobody out. Those guys are still there. Renfro at third Coleman at second. Now two away and the batter will be Carlos Asuaje. Well it's been the theme tonight Jesse just too many runners left on base up to this point in this game. Left them loaded in the first left one in the second one in the third. And all those guys in scoring position as Hector Sanchez continues to be evaluated in the dugout after he took the foul ball off the mask. Nice stop there by Cervelli who hit that ball that ricocheted off of Sanchez's catcher's mask. And Paul Navarro, Mark Rogo, athletic trainers for the Padres. Going over everything I would imagine with him right now. Aswahe lifts that one in the air shallow right field Polanco coming over towards the line he gets there to make the catch and the inning is over two more stranded in scoring position but still one nothing.
inning. Francisco Cervelli hit a foul tip off the mask of Hector Sanchez, and, and he's got a legitimate concussion history, a, a lengthy concussion history. And so no great surprise to see Hector having been taken out of this game, Mark, and uh, it's one of those better safe than sorry type situations. Hopefully that's all it is, is precautionary. Uh, but we'll find out what the Padres have to say about Hector Sanchez after this game tonight. But Andy Green, I think, doing the prudent thing, getting him out of there. And uh, the young guy, Rule 5 pick, Luis Torrens, will now take over behind the plate. I think you said it perfectly. No reason to take a chance and send him back out there. And we talked about Luis Torrens a little bit ago regarding the Rule 5 players and feeling very comfortable behind the plate. He knows the stuff of Denelson Lamette. Shouldn't be that big of a transition for Lamette because he's used to throwing to Terran Sanchez and Austin Hedges. So a mid game catcher change. And now Terrence with Starling Marte at the plate. He is the only Pirate to have reached base tonight through three innings. He's hit by a pitch, starting things off, and he takes a swing and a miss at that hard slider. He was erased immediately on Adam Frazier's double play ball. So Lament faced the minimum nine up nine down after the double play his first time through the batting order. Marte shows the bunt. That one skips in one ball and one strike. Marte the only pirate starter without a hit in last night's game as Pittsburgh had 14 base hits. Harrison led the way with three. Cervelli had two. Mercer had two. Freeze had two. But he was over. There's the bunt. The Met with the bare hand. Nicely done. Boy, Padres have a couple of uh, big time athletes out on the mound and very well handled by the young pitcher. Time now for the unlimited baseball break brought to you by T Mobile. For the Cubs, Wilson Contreras, two for four. Another home run. Three runs batted in in their seven to four win over the Nationals today. Eight homers in his last 19 games. These Pirates. Made a couple of moves today as well. George Contos, a waiver claim from the Giants. And Sean Rodriguez, the former Pirate, is now back. And uh, he is expected to report tomorrow. And speaking of concussions, you saw Brandon Belt. He is now on the disabled list for San Francisco. And Pablo Sandoval will make his return to the Giants at the big league level after spending some time at AAA. Here's Frazier. We mentioned his double play ball first time up 0 for 1. And he takes a high fastball, one ball, one strike. Frazier is red hot. 435 since the All Star break. So it isn't just the last week or so. Had five hits in their three games against the Reds before the Padres got here. More than any other pirate in those three games against Cincinnati. Mentioned that he's a college teammate of Hunter Renfro at Mississippi State. Played mostly shortstop there. He was out in right field last week at Petco, and I asked Hunter before the game with the two of them in, in right field that series. I said, "Who's got the stronger arm?" You know, kind of half seriously. Right. And Hunter just laughed, <laughs> meaning that he has it. Yeah, he was, he was like, "Huh." Uh, and it's one of his best friends. Sure. He wasn't saying it to insult Adam Frazier. It was more like, uh, no, it's, it is I who has the stronger arm. And I think uh, most everybody has a weaker arm than Hunter Renfro. It's pretty incredible out there. Here's the three and one. Frazier, little roller. Hey, Terence just into the game, going to be tested out defensively and handles it perfectly. A couple of weak ground ball outs. One a bunt. And that little topper out in front of home plate. Here in the fourth inning for Lament. Game break coming up from uh, Monsanto Grande. The Mets and the Dodgers. That's the Big Apple. In case somebody wasn't sure. And as we take a look at the uh, Dodgers. On the road 30 and 19. At home 47 and 13. They're playing some pretty good baseball this summer. Padres will visit Dodger Stadium next weekend. Andrew McCutcheon takes high. They have the chance to win 80 games before losing 35. That is incredible. We were there at the very beginning of the season. And I remember talking to somebody 
in the Dodger organization and it doesn't matter who it is but he referred to the regular season as nothing but an appetizer for this team. He said it doesn't matter. He said they got to get it done in the postseason because they haven't and if they don't none of the regular season success exactly. will matter. Remember the year Seattle won 116 games wiped right out. First round wasn't it. Yep division series 116 wins more than any team had ever won before. I'd rather win 82 games obviously win the division in a close race and win the whole ball of wax when it's all said and done right. Obviously like you said yeah. it doesn't matter what happens during the regular season. It's uh, nothing more than a number in a record book at the end of the day. And obviously the more you win in the regular season the better position theoretically you're putting yourself in for the postseason home field advantage all that kind of thing but the whole point is to win the whole thing and the Dodgers have not done that since a year they had a very dramatic and big home run. Met trying for another one two three inning here in the fourth. And it's just outside ball four. So McCutcheon because the second pirate to reach base here tonight. MLB.com at bat is your number one mobile app for live Padres baseball. Stay connected with a fully customizable experience. Get Padres home screen icons, app features, as well as game day live game video highlights, radio broadcast, stat cast news, and more. Download MLB.com at bat. Today. That's some fine reading. Thank you, sir. Here's Josh Bell switch hitting first baseman. Popped up his first time 0 for 1. Lament out of the stretch for the very first time since the second batter of the game. Had retired nine in a row prior to the McCutcheon walk. Quick chat between Terenz. And Denelson. You know, it's interesting we talk about pace of play all the time and some of the things they're considering rules wise to speed up the game. And you keep seeing those conversations come up as a quote unquote easy thing to get rid of. But they seem to be very important and they seem to happen very, very quickly. You know, when a catcher just goes out, one of those, not one of the stalling, time wasting ones, but really just like, hey, it, it needs to be the slider. Here's why, or whatever. Well, you make a good point. Rather than having a catcher always rolling over the signs, and you know exactly what you yeah. want to throw, but your catcher can't get there because we're not only we're not only talking pitch, we're talking pitch plus location. Right. That's easier in three words than it is in six signs. That'll be the slider. And on one and zero, he finds the strike zone. One ball, one strike. So what are you looking for down there? Slider down and away. That was very quick. Got to go. Yeah. Quick conversation. That's how quick it is. Brief. Rather than doing this. Yeah. Here, shake me off. Sure. No, no, no. 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 Just come out here. It'll be quicker. Time. Slide away. All right. See? That was it. It's over. That's how easy it is. That's a lot of running for the catcher, but you know, they're athletes. Bell grounds it. First base and through. That's the first hit of the night for the Pirates. Myers had a shot. Aswahe had a shot, but it's a two out single for Bell. It's a six game hitting streak for Bell. And now two on, two out for Josh Harrison. You know what? A pitcher makes a good pitch. It's down. That's a good pitch. Josh Bell just happened to put in play and found the hole on the right side, just out of the reach of the diving Aswahe. The good thing here, a couple of things, it's station to station baseball, and there are two outs. And we've seen Lamette be in innings like this where he can make an adjustment, make one pitch to get out of this little bit of a jam here. So last weekend against the Pirates, Lament did not allow a hit until the fifth inning here, not until there were two outs in the fourth. He won that game, trying to win this one as well, but has just the one run lead, and Harrison takes a slider a little bit up and in. One ball and no strikes to the guy they call Jay Hay here in Pittsburgh. Third base tonight defensively for Harrison. Started about twice as many games at second than he has at third. But he gets it done defensively all over the place, wherever they ask. 1 0 is swung on and missed. And that goes back to the fastball there, 1 and 1. Denelson in six plus of that start against the Pirates last weekend, just two runs on two hits. 
threw more pitches that night than he had in any other game in his big league career 104. This is number 61 this evening and it's lifted in the air left field. Corey Spangenberg is there and the inning is over no runs a hit and two left for the Bucks. Padres lead after four. Wow, wow, wow. 1912. Quite a run that the Dodgers are on. Corey Spangenberg leading it off here in the fifth inning against Garrett Coley, who scored the only run of this game and has walked twice in two trips to the plate tonight. You know, it's amazing about just that game today for the Dodgers. I saw early on, I think the Mets hit three homers in the first inning. Conforto had a leadoff shot, two more, and I'm thinking to myself, all right, you know, maybe the Dodgers will lose today. And it's like they cruise comfortably. After giving up three homers in the first inning, like no big deal. They win seven to four, and you heard Mike talking about all the home runs that they hit. It's quite a roll. Deficit early, the Dodgers just laugh in their face. When you have a team that does that, and they're on such a roll, it's almost we're as if they say, it. "Okay, bring it on. We, we've got you right where we want you." Yeah. Not too worried about anything. But again, with the Dodgers, the key will be the postseason. Spangenberg by my count last weekend and this weekend against the Pirates six for ten now with four walks including two free passes this evening and one with the bases loaded last night. That's a foul ball and now two and two to Corey. It's all true though what we were talking about last inning if, if they don't after this run if they don't go all the way it was like the Cubs last year. Exactly. You know, I mean, they were they were out to this unbelievable record at this point in the season, and everybody was giving them the central. And all right, you know, they're the best team in the National League. Oh, close pitch goes Cole's way. Spangenberg punched out. We'll see. Speaking of postseason, like Mike said, it's been since 1988. There was a pretty big home run that year for the Dodgers. Gibson swings and a fly ball to deep right field. This is gonna be a home run. Jack Buck to me is the highlight of that one as Harrison tries to chase down a foul pop off the bat of Jan Hervis Solarte. Nothing in one but that's it if they don't go 
the distance if the Cubs end up losing to the Indians which it sure looked like they were going to even you know as late as the very end parts of game seven people are calling it a disappointment and I think the Dodgers are in that place and that can put pressure on a team and I guess we'll see how they handle it come October they have to they have to get it done all the moves they've made to put themselves in position for that short whatever series five game series that seven game series whatever the case may be they got to put the hammer down in the postseason when it comes time to lost to the Cubs in the championship series last year went out to the Mets in the division series the year before we'll see Solarte takes low ball and a strike from Cole Yon Harris a single and a ground out. Remember you and I were watching clips of that Kirk Gibson home run. Yeah. He was down 0 2 in that at bat. Yeah, it was quite an AB. And he hit a little dribbler down the first baseline 0 2 that landed about maybe a foot and a half, two feet foul. Picked up by Mark McGuire. Yeah. And Mike Davis stole second base. The hit doctor, MD Mike Davis. And then the 3 2 backdoor slider. Gibson for the game winner. Little roller. This will be handled by Cervelli. Solarte does not run well, but Bell cannot make the backhand scoop. So Solarte reaches, and the Padres have a one out base runner here in the fifth on an infield single. His second hit of the night. Communication between the catcher and. Oh, I think that's got to be an error. Don't you think? On Cervelli? I mean, I'm, I'm glad Jan Harris Salarte is credited with a hit. You know, his foot slips. Looks like his foot slips. And then he short hops, Bell. I'll take the knock for Jan Harris. We don't get to say infield single for Salarte all that frequently. Right, that's right. Myers hits that one well out to center field. McCutcheon is racing back. All he does is look up because it's gone. Hit error doesn't matter for Salarte because Myers leaves the yard. His team leading 21st home run of the season. And the Padres add to the lead now 3-0 here in the fifth. RBI double his last time up and a two run homer here for Will Myers. First pitch fastball at 95. He wants to bury it inside Cervelli's glove ends up right down the heart of the plate and Will Myers sends it on its way just over the 399 part the center field wall. Maybe this will be the thing that gets it going for Will Myers. First time up for Luis Torrens came in after Hector Sanchez took a foul ball off the catcher's mask. 21 year old from Venezuela. And you think Myers feels a little bit of relief in that dugout? You bet. Double to left, Homer to center. In a while, been slumping. But he is one of those guys, and, and we've heard this and seen this, that it can be the one swing. And Andy Green likes to use the word unlock about Will Myers. Yeah, that one swing can unlock him, and then all of a sudden, he gets red hot. Torrance reaches for that one. Cole will field his position nicely and deliver a strike over to Bell. So Torrance out one to three. That's the second out here in the fifth inning. Another guy that can leave the yard in a hurry. About three or four minutes ago, Renfro was tied with Will Myers for the team home run lead with 20. Now he trails. And that is into left field and right at Marte. That'll be the end of the top of the fifth inning, but the Padres add to their 1 0 lead on Will Myers' 21st home run of the season, a missile shot out to center field here in Pittsburgh.
Park in Pittsburgh three nothing Padres Hey, tonight catch the latest installment of Padres POV presented by Nissan as we get to know Austin Hedges on a ride along to Petco Park that's tonight after Padres live the post game show looking forward to that oh well Mike Palmer does such a great job on that show and he is show. actually not the uh, not the host of that particular yeah, show he does a fine job with everything he does right but that's Michelle Margot but Padres live the post game show. He does that is job. Mike Pomerantz. Yes. yes. The post game show. He's with Steve Finley tonight. Also does a fine job. Right. And Michelle does a great job on POV. Yes. I think you've got everybody straight now. Saw the smile from Will Myers over at first base. Two run homer at the top of this inning. And Lamette working with a 3 nothing lead here in Pittsburgh as he tries to beat the Pirates for the second time in uh, what? A week. Exactly a week. Talk about a shutdown inning right here. He needs one of those. It would certainly be the thing you like to see. These two teams playing last weekend and now the fifth game in the last nine days between the two of them. They've split the first four, 2-2. Two, two. And that's a liner over to shortstop. Nice backhand on the short hop by Dusty Coleman, and he makes a great throw as Polanco grounds out one away here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Some night, Dusty. This is a big league play here. That is not an easy play. Nice backhand gathers himself and fires a strike over to Will Myers. And Denelson laments like, okay, hey, way to go. That's that's a great play. And I'm sure in the back of his mind is saying, you know what? I don't think that play's made an A ball. Maybe even double A. The point is, you get a big league shortstop out there with some range and some good gloves. And that's why, that's why you pound the zone. Slider strike to Francisco Cervelli. Grounded at third base in his only other at bat. That was an at bat that began, though, with that foul tip off of Hector Sanchez's mask. He is now out of the game. Luis Torrens has taken over behind the dish. And Cervelli this time looks at a low fastball. Garrett Cole had been very, very good against the Padres in his career. But the pitch count is up. Padres have scored three times, and that's what we call double barreled action in the Pittsburgh bullpen. Good slider, one and two. And that is one, two straight, the one against the Pirates against San Francisco before that, and Denelson allowing just two runs in each of those two starts. You'll take that. Trying to win three straight for the first time in his major league career. That'll help. Strikes out Francisco Cervelli. That's his fourth K of the night. Maybe fewer strikeouts this evening than we've become accustomed to seeing. And that's okay. Yeah. Hey, you know, like, like I said earlier, a pitcher has no control if a hitter swings early and makes contact and puts the ball in play. You think early outs, good quality pitches, take the sting out of the bat, and then two strikes. Yeah, you flip up the slider, the strikeouts will come. Shortstop Jordy Mercer, the number eight batter for the Pirates, with two outs and the bases empty. Only one hit allowed by Denelson Lament here this evening. Been a walk, been a hit batter. But Josh Bell single with two outs in the fourth. All the Pirates have in the hit column. Been fun to watch since the very moment. He took the mound at City Field back in May for his big league debut. Two balls and two strikes now from Denelson Lamet to Jordy Mercer. Struck him out his first time. You know, I've noticed against Lamet also, and we showed Josh Bell, remember the strikeout last time Lamet faced the high slider. You've seen 
a couple of high sliders tonight swung on offered at and missed that was a foul ball. But just by seeing that last pitch. It triggered the other ones that I had seen so these these pirate hitters are going after that high slider. You don't see a lot of high sliders. I don't think it's by design. OK. Like that. I mean that's up in the zone right. We get into that a little later. Stay OK. Tuned. Back to back strikeouts for Lamette to end the fifth. The Padres are in front. Here we're playing against David Fries in the postseason. Um, you know, with, when he was with the Cardinals, that was a huge one. Um, and then two from the Boston Red Sox. Um, big poppy against Detroit when uh, Torrey Hunter flipped over the wall, and uh, you know that was unbelievable at the time. And then Shane Victorino also that postseason was was incredible. And those are just some moments that have stuck with me. Just you know, big time homers and big time you know opportunities. Uh, they're, they're great. We're covering iconic home runs, special moments that you remember watching, and Carlos Sosuaje sharing a couple of those with us right there, guys. A couple of things to keep in mind. First of all, he mentioned two home runs hit by Boston Red Sox. At that time, he was a member of the Red Sox organization, and his family was always Red Sox fans, so of course those are going to stand out to him. But what was also interesting is the fact that there are so many young guys in this clubhouse that actually don't have any special home run memories. You know, we're talking about a lot of the ones that we remember. 93 Joe Carter, 88 with Kirk Gibson. So it, it's just another testimony to what a great baseball fan that Carlos Esuaje is that he's able to bring a few of those up, guys. He uh, is a guy you can tell. He loves baseball. There's no question about it, Bob. And you know what I remember from that Ortiz one into the bullpen more than anything? Remember the police officer yes. in the back <laughs> holding his arms up? <laughs> That was funny. <laughs> Just a great, one of those great, you know, iconic yeah. sports photographs. That's what I remember more than anything else, aside from the obvious that it was a big home run hit by Big Poppy. This is Dusty Coleman had a nice night, single and a double his first time up. Here he will strike out. You heard Aswahe talk about the home run by David Freeze, 2011 World Series. What a moment this was. Extra innings, game six. Against the Texas Rangers the Cardinals needed to win the game he had a huge triple earlier in the night and then in extras he walks it off and as Joe Buck said we'll see you tomorrow night guys isn't that the Kirk Gibson home run of our generation of their generation that one bounces in and that is going to be the first major league hit for Denelson Lamette just in front of Polanco who was playing I don't know 20 feet behind the infield dirt. Yep. And he's able to get it down. So Denelson goes the other way with one out. And a single for the Padre pitcher. It's worth another look. He wants it down and away. It leaks middle in. He fights it off. I don't know how his hands are feeling right about now, but I tell you what, he's happy enough to forget about the buzzing just out of the reach of Polanco for his first big lead knock. He's all business out there, even now. No big smile, anything like that. Margo oh. fouls one off of Cervelli. 
But getting back to Bob Scanlon's point, I, you know what, Bob? I think that's a good point. David Freeze's home run for that generation, being the Kirk Gibson one for that generation back in 1988. Well, very similar, right? It's a game six. It forced a game seven. It was an extra inning home run. The only difference was is that David Freeze didn't limp up to the plate. <laughs> yeah. Other than that, that was a big one. By the way, the, not only are to Nelson Lamette's hands buzzing right now, but his ears are probably buzzing because the boys have been all over him <laughs> all game about some of his swings at the plate and uh, giving him a little bit of razzing now that he's got that first base hit to uh, put on his shelf. He had been prior to that 0 for 20 with 16 strikeouts. So now 1 for 21. The average goes up for the first time. Margo takes a fastball strike three call. That's the fifth for Cole and the second here this inning. All of a sudden two outs with Lament at first base and the batter will be baseball fan Carlos Iswahe. Wants it down and away. That's a fastball on the lower corner at 96. That is paint. That's exactly where pitchers want to pound the fastball. Suahe had his own memorable home run last night, although not quite a postseason game winner. But the second of his major league career. Already up for the fourth time tonight here in the sixth inning. And as you see, Garrett Cole has hit the century mark 100 pitches here through five and two thirds. You know how else this game of baseball has changed regarding the home run? How else? One of my favorite I remember seeing as a kid. Chris Shambliss 1976 ALCS game five he first fight his way around the bases first pitch off of Mark Littell how security has changed at the ballpark <laughs> Chris Shambliss had to run through like 50 people <laughs> I don't even know if he touched home plate that's why hey, the other way Starling Marte makes the catch he was mobbed literally by fans definitely different Padres lead Cole in the Bucks three nothing. I know. Lamette starts his sixth inning of work tonight. It's been a combination of the slider and the fastball. 86 down away, the fastball 95 96. The Bucko hitters can't catch up to it. The slider out front of it, even the high slider cannot connect. Talk about a kid who's feeling confident with both of his pitches. He is in complete control. He's got a little bit of breathing room. Only one hit tonight for the young right hander. He has allowed one hit and he's got one hit. That's always a pretty good night in the big leagues for a pitcher. And he's got a little bit of run support as well. The Padres, a 3 0 advantage as you see the night in progress for the young right hander. That slider is biting like a mule, I'll tell you that. Some serious movement all around the strike zone. Remember, we mentioned the high sliders? Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. Yeah, I think Bob Scanlon down in the dugout has some insight on that. So we go down to the big right hander. 
Well, Mud, I think you and I both are probably sitting here in awe watching guys swing and miss at that high slider. It's one thing to throw one that's hard and late and razor blade like. That's the traditional slider, but he has so much depth on it, but it doesn't. Sometimes when guys get that much depth, they get loopy, they get too sweepy. Hitters can pick it up, but his is so hard and late that I don't know what you see, but I see guys recognizing that pitch still is a fastball, which is why they're chasing it up in the zone even when he misses up there. Mm -hmm. Am I accurate in saying that you don't see a lot of high sliders, generally speaking, and so maybe that could be part of why it looks like a fastball? Does that make any sense? Well, I think you don't see many high sliders because they're generally not very effective. They yeah. usually end up in the seats. <laughs> but his is so good that even when he's missing, I think by accident with it up there, guys think that it's a fastball and they're going after it again for me mud I don't know if this is the way you see it but for me it's just it's so hard and so late and so much depth on it that guys are just missing it even when he's missing location yeah I totally agree uh, made that point a little earlier to where the high sliders it's not by design but if one just gets away from a little bit but still yet close to the zone they're offering at it plays a little defense too. the pinch hitter John Jaso sends one back his direction. And he handles it very, very nicely. One away here in the bottom of the sixth inning. And close captioning for tonight's game is brought to you by Wiener Schnitzel. I think it's a blister. Yeah. So Lamet taking a look at that right hand, and oh man, throwing a one-hit shutout here with one out in the bottom of the sixth inning. Did he get a piece of his hand on that ball? And just hit back to him. That is the pitching hand, of course. He almost fielded it two handed, and oh. Boy, the guy is just cruising right along. Got his first major league hit a few moments ago as a 3 nothing well, lead. Usually when a pitcher gives that sign or a player gives that sign, that means they're done. But he might have been saying, like, no big deal. I'm okay, don't worry about it. But I believe the uh, gesture that we saw is not part of American Sign Language officially, so there's no yeah. set definition for it. Oh, well, he's good to go. Good not good news. Very good news. Uh, oh wow. Yeah. That's a great shot. He ended up fielding it really with the bare hand, didn't he? Just instinct at that point, isn't it? Sure. Wow. So anyway, Jaso the pinch hitter is out, and now the leadoff man, Starling Marte. So now I'm looking at two things: the velocity, obviously, and then the location of the pitch is thrown, if that ball has any effect on his release point. Maybe some numbing, soreness, tingling. Travis Wood went five plus for the Padres last night. Five relievers were used. Good slider there. And he's ahead, nothing and two on the leadoff man, Marte. Buddy Bauman, Phil Maton, lefty and righty, both worked in last night's game and both throwing here this evening. Here's the 0 2 to Marte. Tried to lay off the high fastball. He does. He make a good point just because he's uh, okay for this moment. I mean, over the course of the next few minutes, that could definitely become less and less comfortable. Sure. Maybe starts to swell a little bit. We know, you know, when you stub a finger or hit your toe on the on the corner of the door or something. Right center field, Manuel Margo drifting over to make the catch. Not a lot of work for the outfielders tonight. So much has been on the ground or by a strikeout for Lament. There's a smile. Two outs, base is empty. The number two hitter, Adam Frazier, coming up. Josh Bell singled with two outs in the fourth. That is the only hit that the Pirates have tonight.
Clement taking a ground ball off the bare hand from John Jaso to start this inning. Trying to finish it off here. He got Jaso on that play, got Marte, and now ball and a strike to Frazier. Padres have already lost their starting catcher tonight, Hector Sanchez, after he was hit in the mask by a foul ball. Nelson started the seventh in that appearance against the Pirates last week. Trying to get through six again here tonight. 2-1 to Frazier. Just misses. Ball at 94 fills the count. Three balls and two strikes. Last time out for Lamette, the career high 104 pitches. Up around 90 right now. You might see a slider here. And it misses just outside for ball four. The second walk issued by Lamette. The first one was issued to the guy coming up now, Andrew McCutcheon. Now, I was going to wait to comment after this at bat, regardless if it was good or bad. And that's the right call. It was a slider, but a couple of fastballs off of location. The slider kind of off of location. I'm not saying that's the case with the hand, but just maybe. I mean, let's face it. He was just hit with a one hopper in the throwing hand. See if he can bounce back here with two outs to try to get McCutcheon. Walking a strikeout from McCutcheon against Lamette. Pitch number 90 of the night is a slider and it's low ball one. Maton were warming. They both worked in the sixth inning yesterday after Craig Stammen got a couple of outs. Now, three balls and no strikes as we check in with Bob. Jesse, just a little update on Hector Sanchez. The Padres just saying that he was removed from the ball game for precautionary reasons. Andy will have more information for us after the ball game, but at least they're not come out, coming out straight away and saying that there's concussion symptom. Uh, currently present, so we'll find out more after the ball game, guys, on Hector's condition. All right, precautionary is uh, probably the best case scenario at this point. Glad to hear that for now. Yeah, I think this is his last pitch or last hitter for uh, for Lebet. Going 3-0, missing with those pitches, and regardless, I think if he walks him, he gets him out. It's going to be his last hitter tonight. Switch hitter Josh Bell waits on deck. And a lefty and a righty loose. Slider misses hot. That's ball four and back to back walks. This copyrighted telecast is presented by the authority of the San Diego Padres. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and description of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the San Diego Padres. So indeed that will be all it would appear for Denelson Lamette 94 pitches tying run coming to the plate in the person of the very powerful Josh Bell Andy Green on his way out there he will clap the hands take the baseball from Lamette who was outstanding again here tonight Padres lead by three but a couple on and a couple out Josh Bell coming up for the Pirates and a new pitcher coming in for San Diego Phil Maton in the sixth.
Baseball brought to you by Evans Tire and Service Centers, home of the buy two, get two. By Saquon Casino, play, win, together in the heart of San Diego. And by Honda, hurry into the Honda Summerbration Sales Event today. A well, nightfall here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and a big old moon as the Padres hold a 3 0 lead over the Pirates with two outs in the bottom of the sixth inning. Tying run is coming to the plate, and the new Padre pitcher relieving Danelson Lament is Phil Maton's second consecutive evening. We see the young righty. 25th major league appearance for Maton, and the first offering to Josh Bell misses up and away, ball one. Lament, five and two thirds innings. Coming in, he had allowed just the one hit. A couple of walks, though, to the last two guys he faced, Frazier and McCutcheon. They take their leads on the bases. And this fastball again is high. 2 and 0 from Maton to Bell. Well, relievers take pride in leaving inherited runners out there, and nothing more than Phil Maton wants to leave those two runners and have a zero in the run column after it's all said and done for Nelson Lament. Bell has had an outstanding season since July 1st and really all year long and that one off the handle into shallow right. Aswahe Renfro Renfro makes the catch at the last moment in back of the second baseman Aswahe. So Maton does strand the two runners and he gets a little bit of help defensively. A lot of ground to cover out there. A lot of bodies. Hunter Renfro makes the play and the Padres have a three nothing lead going to the seventh inning in Pittsburgh. When you're summarizing this game so far, you got to start with the Padres starting pitcher. Denelson Lamette hit the first guy he faced in the first inning. Next pitch was a double play, and after that, it was absolutely shut down for the 25 year old here in his 12th Major League start. On the other side, Will Myers helping himself and helping his team. An RBI double that got past Marte in the third inning to give the Padres a 1 0 lead. And then a two run missile to center field. That thing got out of here in a hurry. His 21st home run of the season to make it 3 0 Padres. And that is the score through six innings here tonight. Lamette, one hit in five and two thirds. He did take that ground ball off the bare hand, off his pitching hand in the bottom of the last inning. Unfair to say now whether it impacted him or not, uh, but he did lose a little bit of control after that play. A couple of walks, gets out of the game, and Phil Maton cleaned it up for him as Corey Spangenberg leads off here against veteran left-hander Wade LeBlanc. Former Padre left-hander LeBlanc does not throw hard. His 41st game of the year, four and a half on the ERA, and lefties at 312. I would have to say a comfortable at bat against Wade LeBlanc. On the backhand at second base, that is Frazier. Gets the speedy Spangy by a step, one away. LeBlanc was not available to the Pirates in the opening game of this series last night on the bereavement list. And now he'll work to the switch hitting Jan Hervis Solarte.
Nice night for Solarte infield single as last time that preceded the Myers home run. Early on it looked like perhaps this was going to be a night of missed opportunities for the Padres. They left the bases loaded in the first inning left a man in scoring position in the second left a man in scoring position in the third left a couple guys on in the fourth. But finally with that Myers home run in the fifth inning able to break through a little bit and thanks to the lament pitching Padres have been in control all night so far. Solarte popped up. And I think he got Cervelli on the backswing. And he is in some great pain as Bell makes the catch. Boy. Oh. Right on the left forearm. That was straight barrel of the bat on the left forearm. You know I, I looked up to see the ball in the air and then I looked down and Solarte was running to first almost backwards because it looked like he was apologizing or, or checking on Cervelli. I imagine he heard Cervelli's reaction when he got hit and Solarte was kind of checking on him as he went to first base. Well these catchers the last couple nights. Put the mask right back on. Wow. Be tough to catch a baseball at 90, 95 miles an hour. Well, Wade LeBlanc's out there, so I should say 86, 87. <laughs> See how he uh, reacts to catching a fastball. 90. Thank you very much. Ball and no strikes to Myers. Home run last time. RBI double in the third. Hit by a pitch in the first. He is two for two. And you see the black tape where he was hit. Right on the corner. One and one. Well, from his reaction and seeing that replay, I, I'm, I'm surprised that he's still back there giving signs. I'm surprised he's able to hold the glove up to give a target. And like you said, it was just square oh. right on that wrist, forearm, whatever. Solarte doesn't take a small swing either. No. Worked a one, two, three, sixth inning last weekend at Petco. Did not face Myers. And now the count full, three balls and two strikes. Boy, it seems like everybody's been dinged up in this series. Yeah. You got hit batters, catchers getting knocked around. Lament taking the ground ball off the bare hand. You rolled your chair over my big toe. I'm in serious pain. That one wasn't accidental, though. You're tough. You'll be all right. Ball four. Myers on base for the fourth straight time here tonight. Two out walk issued by LeBlanc. Day after the Padres score five or more runs, get 50% off any regular menu price online order at PapaJohns.com. Just enter the promo code Padres5. Now the second time up tonight for Luis Torrens. Grounded back to the pitcher, Garrett Cole, following the Myers homer back in the fifth. Plays Hector Sanchez defensively in the fourth inning after the injury. Myers has stolen 10 bases this year. Certainly would not be a surprise to see him attempt to go in this situation up by three, seventh inning, couple men out. And with the left handed LeBlanc out there, it's going to be in that first move, and you can see how far over to the first base side. Of that pitcher's plate that LeBlanc puts his foot on. Torrance in the air right field. That should end the inning. Polanco makes the catch, and it's time to stretch here at PNC Park in Pittsburgh. Padres, 3 0 lead on the Pirates.
Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. 3-0 San Diego in the seventh inning stretch is presented by your San Diego Hyundai dealers. A good stretch here in Pittsburgh tonight and a good night so far for the Padres. That right there is a Pittsburgh Pirate. That is a real deal, Pittsburgh Pirate. Great tradition in this fine city. I would say so. Uh, the only city in America, North American sports, okay. that the three major NBA, NBA. Yeah, there's no NBA. MLB. Here. Hasn't been for some time. I know. Hockey, football, team colors are black and gold. Black and gold. Uh, Penguins defending, uh, two time defending Stanley Cup champions. Steelers have won a little bit in their day, and uh, these Pittsburgh Pirates yep. who have not won. Since uh, the days of the very black and very gold uniforms, 1979. That one's well struck out to left center field. Josh Harrison has left the building. Deepest part of the park. Well, they don't home run here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Twelfth of the year for Harrison. Pirates second hit of the night gets him on the board here against Bill Mayton and the Padres. Well you know I think it's kind of ironic we were just talking about that World Series team for the Pirates. As this ball boy Harrison really gets his hands in nicely. And that ball had that sound and as you mentioned Jesse the deepest part of the ballpark. And what number does he wear five. Bill Madlock the mad dog batting champion. It was kind of like a Bill Madlock type swing from Josh Harrison. It's exactly what they're talking about down in that pirate dugout. Hey, good thing, bad thing. You know, the bad thing is the, the Pirates are on the board, and, but a good thing is it's going to be a home run. It's a solo shot. Still have the two run lead. Gregory Polanco, a three run homer last night, turned out to be the difference in the ball game. That was a pinch hit home run. As you see, 0 for 2 tonight. He's popped to third and grounded to short. It was a nice defensive play by Dusty Pullman to get him. Harrison catching his breath. Talking about the We Are a Family Pirates. I got all my sisters and me. Here's how the song goes. And now, one and one to Polanco from Mayton. That part of the park where he hit it out. 4 10 sign. They call that the North Shore Notch. A little notch in the fence out there in left center. This is the north shore of the Allegheny River. So that's the north shore notch. A couple funky dimensions here. Fun ballpark. Great ballpark. Able to hold up or no? Yes. Yeah, I like how it's not symmetrical. It gives it character. Great skyline views. Clemente Bridge. Beautifully illuminated. Short rain delay at the start of this one. The grounds crew here at PNC did a great job getting the place ready for baseball without having to cover the entire infield with the tarp. I heard a neat grounds crew story maybe a week or two ago. It was a grounds crew intern in Baltimore for the Orioles at Camden Yards. I guess he got mugged after a game. Keys, wallet, phone, the whole nine yards. Walking back out of whether it was car or home, whatever. And the very next day, the Oriole Clubhouse, the players, gotten together, replaced everything. Nice. Like nobody even could figure out how they had found out about it. But they had heard somehow, I imagine from somebody else on the grounds crew, they said no problem. And the Oriole players just took care of it. That shows you that uh, hey, we, we take care of our own and we take care of the guys who take care of us. I mean, we play in this pristine field each and every night. So we're going to take care of our guy. Very nice. Here's Francisco Cervelli. We'll see how he's swinging the bat after taking the backswing off of the left forearm last inning. He's got it all wrapped up now. Mayton has given up the lead home run to Harrison trying to keep it a two run game though. Generally speaking as of late for the Padres in a safe situation it's been Kirby Yates in the eighth and Brad Hand in the ninth. So Andy Green trying to bridge that gap right now here in the seventh. 
Cervelli down the line and out of play one and one. That's a werewolf move to me. I remember all the old movies with the werewolf. Sure. You see that move with the clouds going over. Yeah. And he starts to turn into the werewolf. Beware. It'll be a 2-1 to Cervelli. And it's high. Ball three. Well, John Sterling there. Was, yeah. that, was that what it was? Yeah. Yeah, nicely done. He's a former Yankee. Cervelli. Yes, he is. 2008 to 14 traded to Pittsburgh after the 2014 season and now third year as a bucko and his walk up song is that's amore yes it is 31 years old from Venezuela and he lines that one to left field it's a base hit for Cervelli it comes on a 3 1 second hit of the inning for the Pirates who had one hit in the first six tonight against Lament and Maton. Well, hitters count three and one. You look for the fastball, right? And he got it. Some serious upper hand. Some serious top spin on that one. Cervelli singles to left. That's pretty good. John's great. Love listening to him. Radio voice of the Yankees. Jordy Mercer 0 for 2 with a pair of strikeouts. Need a grounder here. No, Maton's got that fastball. We talk about the spin rate. We talk about sometimes when he pitches up in the zone. That'll work down. Hopefully get a grounder. And turn two. Well, you mentioned the double play. He is hit into more than any other pirate. And among the leaders in the National League. Slider there. And ball one. So he's the right guy is what I'm saying. You don't have any speed on first base with Cervelli, so good situation as Craig Stammen starts to loosen up and the bullpen out in center field. Ball and two strikes now. Mayton working to the number eight hitter and pitcher spot next. The aforementioned David Freeze has come out into the on deck circle. He of the heroics in the 2011 World Series. And National League Championship Series. MVP of both of those series for the Redbirds. Homered last night. And the 1 2. Shallow right center. Margo takes command of the situation and makes the catch. That's out number two as Cervelli goes back to first base. And indeed, David Fries will be the pinch hitter. Two for five last night. A double. A couple of runs scored. And one of them on this home run. Got it up over the 21 foot high wall in right field. Freeze. That was his eighth home run of the season. And strike one from Maton. He does not have a pinch hit, but he has reached base via the walk. Doesn't get the call on the high fastball. That's pretty much the sweet spot you were talking about it for Phil Maytai. He likes to work up there. Looks so good out of the hand of a hitter. You get that four seam fastball that's straight about letter high. It gets up on you and it's about shoulder height really tough to get the barrel of the bat on top of it and square it up. One one goes the other way and will get down in front of Hunter Renfro. First pinch hit of the year for David Freeze. 
And now men on first and second for the leadoff man Starling Marte. You know this could have been trouble as this ball is fought off to the opposite field. Hunter Renfro charging. I thought at first he was going to try to maybe go for the shoestring. But no two hands right to the belt buckle keeps it in front of him. It's the right play. Yes it is. And you know what there may have been times earlier this season. Yeah. Some of these young Padre outfielders. I try to make that play and it can become a very very bad situation very quickly. If that ball gets behind you. So two on two out for Marte. And the fastball clearly high this time one to know. Maton came on to face Marte last night in the sixth inning got him to ground out to first. Now two balls and no strikes. First two pitches in trying to jam him not get extended. Maton in his minor league career his collegiate career pretty much a closer so this whole situation of coming on with guys on base it's new for him. Handled it well last night. Got out of the jam in the sixth inning now he's created his own little bit of a jam here in the seventh and three balls and no strikes to Marte but that's something you got to learn as a young relief pitcher that you're not used to is coming in maybe with runners on second and third and only one out that's a tough spot. I think it tells you a lot about Phil Maton and his makeup right being able to adjust to situations like that and that's good for Andy Green and Darren Ballsy to know that they've got a pitcher that can adjust on three and oh Marte takes a strike. The Pittsburgh partisans thought perhaps that one was high. Looked like a pretty good pitch though. And again, that's the part of the strike zone he likes to live at. Yep. Perfect. That is high. It's all four. Bases are loaded. A left handed hitter Adam Frazier coming up you saw Buddy Bauman was warming you saw Craig Stammen was warming a couple of options for Andy Green here if he wants to make a change. Frazier has been introduced. And here comes the skipper. So the Padres have a two run lead with two outs in the bottom of the seventh inning but Phil Maton has loaded the bases singles by Cervelli and Freeze a walk to Marte and now the lefty Buddy Bauman coming in. Padres baseball brought to you by Petco where the pets go and by Papa John's pizza better ingredients better pizza Papa John's proud partner of the San Diego Padres. 
Well, just a lovely night in Pittsburgh now that the rain has gone, and the uh, Padres hoping the Pirates don't spoil it on the field. A two-run San Diego lead here in the seventh inning, but the bases are loaded, and Buddy Bauman enters to face the left-handed hitting Adam Frazier. Cervelli at third, Freeze at second, Marte at first. Interesting matchup here, Jesse, as he enters his seventh game because Frazier is hitting 350 off of lefties this year. Lefties off of Bauman, one for ten. Something has got to give. And now the count even, one ball and one strike. Deep breath for Frazier, who walked his last time. for a base hit. Cervelli scores easily. Freeze is being waved. The throw well, from Spangenberg will now hold him at third base. So one run comes in. It's a one run game. Still two outs here in the seventh. Everybody moves up 90 feet. Stammen was warming and McCutcheon's coming up. Yeah, you saw this one develop in front of you. And third base coach Joey Cora, he waves up. Then the stop sign. Why? Well, you've got Aaron McCutcheon coming up. David Freeze does not have speed. Stay tuned. More to come. Indeed. So Bauman faced the lefty now. It will be Craig Stammen with McCutcheon coming up. Game two of this series and tomorrow afternoon game three of the series morning baseball back in San Diego veteran left hander Clayton Richard tries to get it back on track against the Pirates and a guy we did not see last weekend from the Buccos the right hander Jamison Tyon what a story he is at testicular cancer diagnosed earlier this year he has come back to pitch and it'll be Richard and Tyon beginning at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning as for the here and now Andrew McCutcheon is about to become the eighth pirate to bat here in the bottom of the seventh inning last night the Bucks had a huge seventh scoring six times they have scored twice so far two outs bases loaded Stammen versus McCutcheon and strike one. Oh, thank you I think you may have got a call there well 39th game for Craig and this is major crunch time good numbers all the way around a hiccup here and there over the course of the season is going to happen to any reliever. Crunch time here in Pittsburgh for Craig Stammen. A couple of veteran National Leaguers have gone head to head more than a couple of times over the course of their careers. McCutcheon, three hits. Two of them have been home runs, both solo shots.
One ball and one strike. Popped him up. Myers near the mound. Got it. And the seventh inning comes to a close. The Pirates get two, but the Padres still lead. The exact right word that, that my comrades just used to describe the Stanton swing. It's violent. I, I mean, he attacks the baseball. We we use that term a lot, attack the baseball. But he 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 is like assaulting it as it comes to the plate. It's incredible to watch that swing. It's not a touchy feely type swing. It's no. fun to watch. But there's uh, plenty of touching the baseball. Yes. For John Carlos Stanton, as you heard from the guys now leading baseball in home runs. Daniel Hudson the former Diamondback in for the 50th time this year for Clint Hurdle he's got Renfro Coleman in the pitcher spot here in what is now a one run game in the top of the eighth Pirates got a pair in the bottom of the seventh but the Padres have the lead still Renfro singled in his middle at bat tonight one for three and ahead of the count two balls and no strikes good fuzz out of the hand of Daniel Hudson you saw 97 there four seam fastball Got the change up slider. He's done very well since the beginning of May out of the bullpen for the Pirates. He did have a hiccup against the Padres last Friday night. He took the loss in that game at Petco. Came in to face Corey Spangenberg, who promptly greeted him with an RBI double to tie the game. And then, remember this with Alan Cordova at the plate, he threw a wild pitch on ball four mm -hmm. that brought Spangenberg home, and that run turned out to be the difference in the game. So he took the loss. In the first of the three that the teams played last weekend. Breaking ball strike there. Now two and two to Renfro. Wild pitch, ball four, to bring home what turned out to be the winning run. Just when you think you saw everything, right? That's it. Renfro reaches for it, serves it into left field. That'll get down for a base hit. Second of the night for the Padre right fielder. A lead single as they look to add back on here in the top of the eighth inning. And we were talking about Giancarlo Stanton taking over the, the home run lead. Hunter Renfro, nice job. Pulling that one the other way, but Aaron Judge leading forever, it seemed like since early on in this season, but he has not been 
great since the All-Star break. And you know what people are going to say about Aaron Judge and his four homers and his sub 200 batting average since forget the All-Star break since the home run derby. And you know what I, I really don't buy it. sure it happens but there have been guys who have been in the home run derby that have gone off after the All-Star break as well. It's just because the winner or if they're in the finals or whatever I think you kind of look both ways. Dusty Coleman sends this one to deep center McCutcheon is tracking it he's looking up and it's gone third hit of the night for Dusty Coleman and you know he's a triple shy of the cycle more importantly a two run homer and the Padres get those two runs right back they once again lead by three what a night for Dusty Coleman. Middle and fastball, and you know I don't. Well, I'm I, I. It's okay to be sounding like a broken record. Another ball hit hard off the bat of Dusty Coleman. Daniel Hudson displeased with himself, or perhaps his mitt. Dusty Coleman, his third home run as a big leaguer, and all three in the last couple of weeks. Pinch hitter for Stammen will be Alan Cordoba and he takes low from Hudson you said it. he's been really good for them this year and now twice in eight days the Padres have touched him up a little bit. Yes yeah, since the beginning of May 2.03 ERA opponents in the heat 206. You weren't kidding. 22 for 107 off of Hudson but the Padres are. Making the pay tonight early. Out of the pen. Alan Cordoba grounded out in his only at bat last night. He was a late inning replacement in the outfield. Pinch hitting here tonight with a couple of runs in on Dusty Coleman's two run homer. Hudson way away. And now three balls and no strikes. You know, I'm in a big time slump and I'm really getting upset. We're talking about pick the pick stick. Pick the stick game, yeah. Who'd you have tonight? I had Manuel Margot. He has yet to reach base, but you know what? He's on deck, and uh, it's only the eighth inning. And Hudson is struggling. That's a four pitch walk to Alan Cordova. And now here comes Manuel, so an opportunity for him to not only help out the Padres, but also help you out and pick the stick. Clint Hurdle not interested in much of that, of course. He sees his reliever come on, give up a single, a homer, and a walk. The first three men that he's facing, and that's a pretty good formula to get a visit from the pitching coach. Here's your guy. It's a good pick, by the way, because Margot's been red hot. We talked about it at the start of the yes. game. Yes. But you put the hex on him, huh? I, I don't know what I'm going to start doing. It's like getting serious. Whoever had Dusty Coleman to pick the stick is having a great night. Yeah, you picking for Orsillo. First place, baby. Building on that lead. Two run homer, double, single, stolen base. Nice defensive play. Did you get a point for a nice defensive play? If you do not, and uh, as we take another look, right on contact, right down the heart of the plate. Into well, the topiary. Yeah. Margo attacks early. And flies one foul down the right field line. Hudson has come on and not retired a batter yet. Padres by three in the eighth. And he can't throw a strike right now. Four pitch walk to Cordoba one and one the ball still out there in center field. It's pretty impressive how they spell out the word mark there pirates with yeah. the bushes. You got anything like that out at Alpine. It's a grant. <laughs> <laughs> no it says welcome. Oh that's very nice. And yet I've never been invited. That could be two five four three. So Margo grounds into a twin killer. And now. Two outs and the base is empty for Aswahe. The 
no man was thinking right now he's thinking hey Grant don't take me tomorrow afternoon and pick the stick really upset it's those competitive juices you never lose what place are you in uh, second or third I think it's now third I'm sure if you tune into Padres Live, the post game show, Mike and Steve will have the updated standings for you. Boy, I tell you, what a night for Dusty Coleman. Oh, okay. <laughs> there he is. I mean, I don't select personally the Carl's Jr. star of the game, but if I did, <laughs> might be Denelson Lamette, but Dusty Coleman. I, I can see a case for him. For either guy, and hey, it's always good when you can uh, look to a couple of different guys on your team and say either one of them could be the star of the game. And that's a good thing. That's what I'm saying. And uh, you know what? Even if I go pointless tonight, I just want to see the Friar win. You're your team player that way. <laughs> well, it's like a Swahe who's up now. You know, he had the two run homer last night in the fifth inning, and he said what he said after he hit his first major league home run. He's like, you know, we lost. I'm not going to take any great joy in it. He said that after he hit his first big league homer. I mean, that's something that I think most guys celebrate no matter the circumstance. Yeah. He's like, you know what? We lost the game. It's nice to kind of have accomplished that. That gives you a little bit of an idea about how this guy is wired. Hey, I, I, I played with guys that, uh, you know, they go three for four or four for four and then I'm losing a ball game and they're happy because they went four for four. Strikes out there, and that will end the top of the eighth inning. It was a rough start for Daniel Hudson. You have a single to Hunter Renfro. The next guy up was that guy, Dusty Coleman. He's having a big night. Single, double, now a homer for Dusty to straightaway center field. And the Padres lead by three. Bill Howe plays of the game. They belong to the Padres starting pitcher Denelson Lamette working into the sixth inning. He allowed just one hit and no runs. He struck out five through 94 pitches. Oh, that slider. It was up, it was down, it was all around, and it made the Pirates look bad all night long. He also made a nice defensive play, but hey, Denelson Lamette, last three starts, a sub two ERA. Going backwards, zero runs, two runs. Two runs in his last three. Progress each and every time out. You know, he was hitting the hand with that comebacker off a little bit with the location, his fastball and slider. Ball taken away, but after all told, three walks didn't hurt him. No runs given up, punched out five, and thanks to Dusty Coleman, that kid there. Some padding for the Padres as we can get late into the eighth. 
Kirby Yates on to set it up. He faces Josh Bell with a three run lead. Couple of two run homers tonight for the Padres. Yates, tough one last night, but hey, that's the beauty of uh, being a relief pitcher, right? That's the one thing that I enjoyed. You know, if you do poorly one night, there's a chance you're going to get another chance the next night and turn it around. Not Bell. like a starter where you have to wait five days. It's going to be the, one of the toughest things about being a starting pitcher, I'd imagine. If you have a bad one, those five days might feel like a month. Even if you have a good one, you want to get right back out there, so you yeah. can't wait for that fifth day. O2 to Bell. And an awkward swing, but he gets it through the right side for a base hit. Second hit of the night for Josh Bell and a leadoff single here in the eighth inning. Really awkward swing. Boy, did he he came off the ground? Did he not just come off the ground there and swing that bat? I was watching the bat and the ball. He was either on his tiptoes, but he it, it was very weird. awkward, yeah. Airborne? He can't. Maybe. Oh my gosh. You don't see that every day. No. Here's Josh Harrison. He swings at the first pitch off the mound. Coleman gets one. Solarte gets two. Pitcher's best friend. And what a play by Dusty Coleman. Dusty Coleman doing it with the wood and doing it with the letter. Leather, leather, yeah, whatever. You gotta be cartooning me, Dusty. The flip throw. Off the mound, leaves it up in the air with the, hey, Solarte. Let's not forget about Solarte with the barehanded grab. Name and number to first base has to throw to complete the double play. All the way around. And Solarte had just moved to second base. All night. Over at third. You're on the right side of the infield for what two minutes mm -hmm. and you challenge that way no problemo. Spangenberg goes from left to third as Cordoba stays in to play left field. So as Suahe out of the game and beautifully done on the infield by the Padre defense. Now Polanco with the base is empty. That's how you like him. And he takes ball one from Kirby Yates. Wow. Boy, in that last homestand. Mets Pirates twins came in and the Padres were flashing the leather it seemed like over and over and over again and that play by Dusty Coleman as good as any of them. When I think about shortstop defense this year that recent Allen Cordova play we kind of laid out all the way up the middle yep. that's up there and then this one's right with it I think. And the the. The part I look at is that Dusty Coleman going the opposite way away from the bag. He's got to get enough on it on yeah. the backhand to get it there so they can complete the back end of that double play. Solarte barehand, spin and throw. Polanco grounded to Coleman earlier in the game. That was a nice play by Dusty, but this one even better. It's all good. Nice night of the bigs. The six and the four did their job in that six four three double play. And now the one. Kirby Yates trying to finish off the bottom of the eighth. Two and two. Spangenberg, Solarte, and Myers for the Padres. Three, four, and five in the ninth inning. Here's the 2 2 from Yates and a foul ball straight back. Now full three balls and two strikes to Gregory Polanco. He's popped out twice, grounded out. 
Had the pinch home run last night. Andy Green using Kirby Yates in a setup role. Assuming the score stays about the same, you can expect to see Brad Hand in the ninth. That's outside, ball four. Amore. Oh. You, you gotta love it. You don't like King of Cool? I didn't say that. I'm not playing your reindeer game. Shame on you. I didn't say that. <laughs> it's a fine song. It makes me want to play the spaghetti. First pitch slider is key right there to get ahead to Cervelli. Guy's taking a beating behind the plate the last couple of nights. I was just gonna say that that arm's gonna be barking a little bit, don't you think? Doesn't seem to be affecting him in any way. Catchers are a different breed. Took a backswing from Solarte off the forearm earlier. Off balance there, nothing in two. Padre catcher Hector Sanchez, who started, left this game after taking a Cervelli foul ball off the mask. Make sure you stay tuned in. Padres Live, the post game show. Mike and Steve will have the update from the clubhouse. Get to uh, watch and listen to what Andy Green has to say about that and everything else here tonight. Superstar nights for Denelson Lamette, Dusty Coleman. Big home run from Will Myers, who also had an RBI double. Don't let him get lost in the shuffle tonight. And the Padres holding a three run lead here in the bottom of the eighth. Yates trying to finish Cervelli, and now one and two. Slider backed up on him a little bit, left on the inside part, kind of didn't get that break that he wanted. Cervelli singled and scored his last time. The one two from Yates. Doesn't miss by too much, but now two balls and two strikes. It'll be a 2 2 and a little bit. Inside now a full count to Francisco Cervelli and uh, Kirby Yates was absolutely dominant most of the summer for the Padres and he ran into that hiccup last night that we talked about. And just seems to be working maybe a little bit harder out there tonight than we're used to seeing. We're trying to get through a scoreless eight. Polanco will be off from first base. And a foul ball. Very late on that fastball in at 94. Remember, Kirby Yates is a nice changeup as well. Myers backs up behind Polanco at first base. And this 3 2 pitch is out in front of the plate. Luis Torrens has it. Slow runner, easy play, and the inning is over. Thanks in no small part to the defensive prowess of that guy and that guy. Coleman and Solarte combining on one of the prettiest double plays the Padres have turned all season. Fryer up by three, go to the ninth.
but in Southern California alone, it's you know the biggest sport. I'm just happy that this club here is like moving up and they're going in the right directions. People want soccer here. You know, people want to, to support something. This community wants something, you know, but but I think they want a winner. Tuesday, inside San Diego Sports explores San Diego's rich soccer culture. You'll hear from an established local pro team and another professional team that plans to build a stadium in North County. Tune in Tuesday after Padres Live. Hosted by Mike Pomerantz. All right, here you go. We've been waiting to see him for the last week or so. The Lithuanian born Davidas Nevaraskis making his fifth major league appearance. Lithuania. This is great. And this is what I love about sports. You know, if you could name one other. Lithuanian big league pitcher. I'll give you a dollar. And you know what? Nobody's going to win that dollar <laughs> because of that little nugget right there. There you go. That's my point. Perhaps the most wild part of his story, and it's obviously a heck of a story, yeah. when they called him up this year, they optioned to AAA gift Nagope, who had become the first African born right. player in Major League history. Another great story. That's incredible. It is. It really is. I mean, Rob Manfred all the time talking about growing the game and, you know, wanting to make it more of an international sport and, and not just in this hemisphere. And, well, here you go, the Lithuanian. He grew up in uh, Vilnius, which, of course, is the capital. Of course it is. One <laughs> it's one of the largest cities in the uh, Baltic region. And Corey Spangenberg from Pennsylvania faces off against Nevaraskis from Lithuania. One ball, one strike. I mean, by the way, 98 miles per hour. Live arm. Boy, I wonder what it's going to be like when he goes back home to the homeland if he goes back, right? I mean, is it, is it going to be a big deal? Is I would think so, yeah, yeah. absolutely. I mean, I've, there's been basketball players, uh, Olympic athletes that have uh, made names for themselves sure. in track and field, basketball. And are, are you just reading Wikipedia right now? No, actually, I'm just talking from the heart. <laughs> oh, you got a lot of Lithuania in your heart. That's very nice. <laughs> I am also not reading from Wikipedia. It was actually the first nation to declare itself independent from the Soviet Union before the collapse. Kind of an interesting uh, political nugget. Sorry about being free. There you go. Ball and two strikes from Davidis Nevaraskis. Really neat. Speaking of international baseball, by the way, you know, that new collective bargaining agreement that was agreed to this past winter went public in the last week or two. And in it, kind of buried there were, were some nuggets about potential international games as Nevaraskis freezes Spangenberg for the first out here in the ninth inning. I think a lot of Padre fans have probably heard about the fact that there is a possibility that the Padres and the Dodgers would play a series in Mexico City in the regular season this coming year in April. It's not confirmed yet, but MLB has floated it out there and kind of wait and see what happens. But also this next season coming up, there is expected to be regular season baseball played either in Puerto Rico or the Dominican Republic. And then in 2019, games in Japan and Mexico and the United Kingdom. I thought you were going to say Lithuania. Well, it's not too far. Comparatively speaking, you can probably get a, a decent flight from Vilnius to London, right. Heathrow, maybe Gatwick, I don't know, to catch that baseball. Well, we've given you a lot of information on uh, Davidas, so uh, nope. never ask us again. <laughs> ah, I see what you did. Never ask us. Jan Hervis Solarte from Venezuela. When you think about international baseball, you think of the Caribbean, you think of Latin America, Asia, obviously North America. But I mean, Lithuania, the Baltic states. It's incredible. It really is. Ball and two strikes on Solarte. Couple of hits, both singles tonight. He's also scored a run. And Everaskis. Issues a 97 mile per hour fastball. Big body going forward. He gets a lot of leverage in that delivery. It's a uh, it's a delivery with that big physique of his. That it's really not a violent delivery. He gets that big frame going, and the ball just jumps out of his hand. Yeah, it really does. 
goes from the first base side of the pitcher's plate. Always from the stretch. Six three two fifteen is what they list him at. Ball and two strikes to Solarte. 99 on that fastball from Nevaraskas. So, yeah, in the next couple of years, per the new collective bargaining agreement, you're going to have regular season Major League Baseball in Asia, Japan. I know Japan is part of Asia, but the first one, it's a little bit unconfirmed as to where it will be. Mexico, Puerto Rico, and or the Dominican, and the U.K. Solarte and Nevaraska is battling here. Still one ball and two strikes. Another one, two, and in the dirt. A breaking ball and Solarte sends it out to right field, but Gregory Polanco tracks it down, and that's out number two in the ninth inning. And it's time now for the Carl's Jr. star of the game. There it is, Dusty Coleman. There you go, first time up. That's a single the other way. He's going to steal second base and puts him in scoring position. Next time up, that's a double down the left field line here at PNC Park. And then in the eighth inning, a two run home run out into the topiary. How about a little defense, too? From Coleman, Solarte, and Myers helping Kirby Yates get out of that eighth inning. And in the short time we've seen Dusty Coleman, very, very solid on both ends of the baseball, offensively and defensively. Nice scouting report. I agree. And a nice night for Dusty Coleman. Two outs of the base is empty for Will Myers. RBI double in the third, two run homer in the fifth. He has reached safely all four times that he's come to the plate tonight. That might be the biggest news coming out of this game for the Padres. Truly. Because if he gets going, gets hot here, that'll make for a, a fun few weeks around this ball club. Big hits. You know, the bullpen had a little blip last night. Hopefully, that's just a fluke. Navaraskis delivers a breaking ball strike, one and two. I want to know what the. Uh, if there's a the amateur status of baseball in Lithuania as far as like little leagues high schools what in, type of programs they have over there. Well indeed they do have little league programs and in fact his dad Davidas Nevaraskis his father is very involved in the little leagues there. MLB also has a European baseball program that's based out of Italy so he participated in that. That's the whole point. I mean people hear the UK and I think you know. Some fans have a tendency to be like, why even try? But I mean, that's the point. They're trying sure. to grow the sport in Europe, in addition to everywhere else, obviously. Here you go, a Lithuanian. Myers reaches for that one. This is Josh Harrison. A one, two, three, top of the ninth inning for Davidis Nevaraskis. The Padres have their own reliever. Brad Hand, he's coming in to try and close this thing out in the bottom of the ninth inning. Padres have a 5-2 lead as they try and even the series in Pittsburgh.
That man right there is your National League reliever of the month for the month of July. Brad Hand in 11 and a third innings last month. Struck out 19, did not allow a run, and has not allowed a run since June 14th. He has been, in a word, filthy. And now he comes on to try and earn his eighth save of 2017. Here in the bottom of the ninth inning at Pittsburgh, he has not allowed an inning in his last 20 and a third. And I mean, when you consider that most relievers go out there for an inning at a time, that's a pretty big gap between him and the rest of the pack. It most certainly is, and the strikeout is the big thing for Brad Hand as well. 72 punchies, tied for second among NL relievers, tied for fifth in Major League Baseball. Talked to Brad before the game, thought something was very interesting. He said, I said, hey, nice fastball and breaky ball you got. He goes, thanks. I said, uh, by chance, do you throw a changeup as we take a look at this season? He goes, I'm going to tonight. And I said, well, why is that? He goes, well, a lot of right handed hitters might throw a changeup tonight. So wow. keep, keep an eye out for that. You're breaking news here. That was a breaking ball, and it's a ground ball. That's Spangenberg. And that's one away for Brad Hand here in the ninth as we revisit our keys to the game brought to you by your San Diego Honda dealers. All right, Mr. Grant, what do we got? Well, if I remember correctly, the first one was End Cole's good run. Remember? He had a good run going. Six innings tonight, eight hits, three earned runs. And the bullpen bounces back. So far up to this point, guys out of the pen doing a nice job. Two, two thirds, five hits, and two earned runs. And three run lead here, and two more to get for Brad Hand. Jose Osuna will be the pinch hitter here for the pitcher, Nevaraskis. One out of the base is empty. Padres two outs away from evening this series. Just with your point with Garrett Cole, I mean, it's, it's an okay start for him, you know, certainly three runs and all that, but he had allowed zero, one, or two runs in five consecutive starts. So the Padres uh, did go above and beyond that against and, him tonight. And they stuck to the plan. Remember, Andy Green was talking about attacking him early. There were some early swings. Ball and a strike now to Osuna. Got the start in right field last night. Did not see Brad Hand in that game. One for two with a single a walk and a run scored yesterday. That's a nasty breaking ball, man. He just flips it up there. Great rotation, consistent location. There's not much you can do with that pitch. You swing and miss, you foul it off your shin, you foul it down the left field line. You, you can't keep that fair. Ball and two strikes to Osuna. Got him. Same pitch. And now two away. It, it's really. Incredible to watch him work. And, Bat, and Brad's just like, oh, okay, ho oh, hum. <laughs> Give me the ball. I'll throw more strikes for you. Swing and a miss. And the extra point is good for Brad Hand. Were you here when we were talking about his follow through? No. Oh, yeah, he's a field goal kicker, too. Did you notice that? I can see that. Yeah, yeah. well, watch his follow through. He puts it through the uprights every time. After every pitch. No, I know exactly what you mean. I just hadn't thought of it that way. Leadoff man, Starling Marte. 0 for 2 of the walk. He's also been hit by a pitch. And now he's behind in the count, nothing in one. It's a big follow through. <laughs> it is. Very like a, like a Martin Gramatica or something like that. Nice. And the snap. The ball is down. Good hold. And it's good. It's from Minnesota. Maybe he's a Gary Anderson fan. <laughs> oh, good call. Marte waits on the one strike pitch and he takes the fastball in. So not a bad year for Brad Hand, right? 2017 all star National League reliever of the month for July. Yeah. Name thrown around every minute and it doesn't seem to affect him one way or the other. He was literally at the beach when the trade line came and went trade deadline came and went literally hanging out at the beach his wife and daughter and now one strike away from his eighth save here in 2017.
Big night offensively for Myers and Coleman. Nice start for Denelson Lamette. And now Andy Green's, Green's crew, one strike away from a Saturday night win in Pittsburgh. Marte waits. The pitch from hand is taken just a little bit off the plate, two and two. What say you, Robo Ump? Inside. Yeah, that's where you want to miss. Especially when uh, you know you're ahead in the count. Now you're even in the count. Two two from hand is again down and in. And now the count full. Three balls and two strikes to Marte. Ground ball should be the ball game. Spangenberg to Myers and the Padres even this series up. Brad Hand earns his eighth save of the year as the Padres take a 5-2 victory here in Pittsburgh. Padres Live is next. Mike Pomerantz coming up. What have you got?